Sports presentation. CFL 83 is brought to you by Carling O'Keefe, brewers of OV, by Carlsberg Beers, and Miller Highlights. And now, for all the action, we take you to the stadium and our CBC Sports crew. Today, the BC Lions and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers one final step toward the Grey Cup, the Western Final, live from the stadium at BC Place. What a great feeling it is here for the first time ever. Canadian Football League playoffs indoors. Conditions are perfect for a bomber matchup with the Lions. The Eastern final score is in. The Argos are heading toward the Grey Cup. Now, we're ready for the final chapter in the CFL 83 playoff story. It's going to be a great one here this afternoon. Here's Don. Thanks, John. Well, no teams in the Canadian Football League have experienced a longer Grey Cup drought than the Lions and the Bombers. It's been almost two decades since either team made a Grey Cup appearance. The Bombers in 1965, the Lions in 64. Of course, for one team, that drought will end this afternoon. However, with the competing coaches, it's a different story. Don Matthews of BC and Cal Murphy of Winnipeg are totally familiar with Grey Cup appearances. They were very key figures in the Edmonton Eskimo dynasty that came to an end last Sunday afternoon. We have two coaches to analyze this afternoon's ball game, and as we get set for this final, Leo Cahill, let's take a look at the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Well, Don, it, they're going to have to depend on their generator again, and I'm talking about number two, Tom Clements. Last week, he was 21 for 28 for 445 yards. He also got some help in his running game from James Sykes. Sykes had 22 carries for 124 yards. They've got a couple of game busters on the outside, and Boyd and Murphy, they carried that they caught 12 passes, I should say, last week for close to 300 yards. Now, they're not going to make this kind of yardage against the BC Lions defense, but they've got to generate offense to win this game. What about BC, Ron? Well, Leo, I really believe Roy DeWalt's the key to the BC offense. He's a young quarterback in his first final as a starter. He's looking forward to it here at home. He's going to get a lot of work from John Henry Wright and Ray Strong as pass receivers. They're not going to run the ball very much, I think, with those two. But those two are excellent coming out of the backfield. Defensively, the BC Lions are very strong, set a league record with 42 interceptions. And Larry Crawford and Kerry Parker are their gunners back there. I think we're in for a big day, Don. It will be noisy under the dome here at the stadium at BC Place. We'll be back with the opening kickoff, but first, let's go to Brian Williams at CFL Control in Toronto. Thank you, Don. Good afternoon, everyone. The Toronto Argonauts defeated the Hamilton Ticats 41-36 this afternoon in just a tremendous football game. Played before a record crowd of 55,000. There's the winning touchdown with 27 seconds to play, scored by Cedric Minter. Toronto, though, has to be concerned. Hamilton played them very tough. Johnny Shepard had three touchdowns. Coming up at halftime, we will talk live with head coach Bob Obilovich. He will join us here in the studio. He will have with him quarterback Condridge Hall away and a couple of players including defensive end Rick Moore. We'll take a look at all the highlights from the game this afternoon and also look ahead to the Grey Cup next Sunday afternoon. This is CFL 83 coming to you from our control center in Toronto. The kickoff is next. Carling O'Keefe Sports. Your box seat to the CFL. We're bringing you more games than ever. A full interlocking schedule of exciting matchups. With new powerhouses and renewed rivalries. It's wide open football CFL style. Catch all the action from your home box seat. Carling O'Keefe Sports. Bringing the sports world home to you. No matter how many of you come to Harvey's, no matter how often or when, your hamburger doesn't start charbroiling until you arrive. It's not preheated and waiting for you in a box. Only you can garnish it to your taste. The Harvey's Hamburger. It's made to order and costs very little. And that's got to be beautiful. Harvey's makes your hamburger a beautiful thing. 
capacity crowd of almost 60,000 in the stadium at BC Place waiting expectantly as Lou Pisaglia, the league scoring champion, prepares to kick off. James Sykes and Kirby Wilson are deep. Wilson takes it at the 10-yard line. Penalty fly goes down as Kirby Wilson fumbles the ball at the 45. Penalty flag back at the 20 yard line. Number referee Bud Ulrich. Decline. First down. Explaining the penalty, but of course with the well, fumble recovery, it's declined. Well, this is no way to start a football game when you're on the road in front of 60,000 people, Leo. Well, it's just unfortunate. He's been doing a good job all year returning, but uh, he got it kicked out of his hands there, and what a break for the BC Lions. The opportunist pouncing on that ball was Kerry Parker. First and ten, the Lions at the Winnipeg 45. Roy to Wolf under pressure. He'll run with the ball, and he's down at the 42 by John Sturdivant. He was being chased by Doug McIver. Roy to Wolf, the starting quarterback. He has John Henry White and Ray Strong as his running back. Ned Armour added to the lineup as a wide receiver for this ball game. The offensive line remains the same. It's second and six. Pancrafts out of bounds with a first down at the Winnipeg 33-yard line. Well, this is a guy we've been watching all year that's made big play after big play, and he goes down there right again, and it's just a simple breakout pattern, seven yards out, and he just finds that flag that he has to make that first down, catches the ball for the first down. Sure hands and a great throw. Excellent coverage by Rose. The ball was just on the money. If you can't throw those kind in the league, you can't play. A 1980 territorial protection out of Simon Fraser University. John Pancraft figures to play a key role in the outcome of this afternoon game for the BC Lions. First and ten from the Winnipeg 33. Roy the wall. Throwing deep, looking for armor. It's incomplete. Roy DeWald in the offseason returns to his home in Houston, where he's involved in the banking business. And he'd like to cash in early in this ball game against this Winnipeg defensive unit. Sturdivant, McIver, and Norman up front. The linebackers, as good a group as perhaps there is in the Canadian Football League. And in the secondary, same lineup that was successful, 49-22, over the Edmonton Eskimos in last Sunday's semifinal. Second and 10 from the 33. Right the wall under pressure, he'll go down at the 36-yard line. Tyrone Jones was the man who came in on top of the BC quarterback, and they are not moving here at the stadium at BC Place. That's Lou, 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 a familiar chant for Lou Pasaglia, the place kicker deluxe who this year accounted for 191 points. What an outstanding athlete he is at Simon Fraser. He was a quarterback and a wide receiver. Many people overlook sometimes the athletic skills of the gentlemen who have the responsibility of handling the kicking chores. Lou Pisaglia with the field goal attempt. It's good. A 44-yard field goal by Lou Pisaglia. The Lions are the first on the board. And we'll return right after this. You've rehearsed it a thousand times, yet it's never the same way twice. But right from the first time you played, you knew you had found your game. And right from the first time you tried OV, we'll bet you had found your beer. That's why you just say OV for that great tasting beer. OV, OV, oh yeah. I'm going to demonstrate the Delco Freedom Battery's complete maintenance program. That's it. This little eye shows green for go. Sure, powerful starts time after time. Just try to find a better maintenance-free battery for your car or truck at any price. The Delco Freedom Battery. Get it? Then forget it. 
First and 10 from the 35, and while we have a moment, let's extend our congratulations to Bob Obilovich and the Toronto Argonauts for their Eastern victory this afternoon, 41-36, in a thriller over the Hamilton Tiger Cats. The Blue Bombers have not made any lineup changes offensively. The same unit that defeated the Edmonton Eskimos in the semifinal. Tom Clements, who held such a hot hand in that game, 21 of 28 passes. The Bombers, as they did against Edmonton, showing a lot of motion. To James Sykes. Sykes, about a 10-yard game. The ball was fumbled, but the play has been whistled dead. Nelson Martin made the tackle. Sykes had a big game last week against Edmonton. He's off to a fine start against the Lions. Well, Winnipeg went to the, a lot of motion, and then they just came back and opened the game with a running play by Sykes. He's a proven veteran in CFL play. He'll do the job for you. And that's that play that they like, too, Ron, where the quarterback starts to spread action. They're told before the game, stop Clemens. They just give it to Sykes, and he gets the first down. Almost the first down, I should say. Jackman and Kantner in on the short yardage situation, and Tom Clemens keeps. He drives up over the 45-yard line. This is the defensive unit that Tom Clements will be working against this afternoon. And the Lions may be forced to make some changes because of the questionable status of linebacker Glenn Jackson. But up front is Clausen Vaughn, Moore, and Reset. And quite often you'll see the team with seven defensive backs in there. Again, all that motion by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. First and 10 from the 47. So well, scrambling around, buying time for Rick Hunt. First down, out to the 48 of the D.C. Lions. Got you know, there by Andre Jones. You know, Doc, Winnipeg's offense has been given a lot of criticism because they call it garbage offense. But as far as Clements is concerned, he makes something out of nothing. Time after time, he sprints to his left, doesn't see anything there. Then takes the advantage of coming back to the offside, picks up a couple blocks, and spots the receiver downfield. Now, he does this too often to have it be a coincidence. He's just uh, great at doing this, and that's his style of play. 17-yard gain on the pass to Rick House. It's first and 10 Winnipeg at the 47 of the Lions. The Lions lead it by a score of 3-0. Clements to the sideline. Hucklack out of bounds at the 41. That will be a pickup of six. It will be second and four Winnipeg. Dan Hucklack played some junior football out here on the West Coast with the Renfrew Trojans. In 1980, he came to the Bombers from the Lions, primarily used as a blocking back, and on the season, was also on the receiving end of 31 passes. Second and four, Winnipeg at the 41 of the Lions. Movement at the line of scrimmage, penalty flags go down as James Sykes tries to get outside. He's taken out of bounds by Melvin Bird, and there's also another penalty flag on the play. Well, I don't really believe right here you're going to see a penalty called on an offensive ball player for face masking. I think that James Sykes actually grabbed hold of Melvin Bird, but we'll see what the referees call. Very unusual call if it is. Yeah, you picked it up, Ron. Actually, it was one of those situations where he was cornered, couldn't get away, and he tried to push the defender off by just grabbing him by the face mask. And that don't count either way. All right, we're going to get a good look at it. You watch, he'll switch the ball, put it in his left hand. Leo, would you like? Now watch that right hand, right? Now watch him. Got a pretty good hold of it. So give him a little twist while he's there. Referee Bud Ulrich explaining the penalties to Tom Clements. as you hear the response of the crowd. You can appreciate the fact that it is marched off against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Well, you know one thing, we could be on the lookout all afternoon for Cal Murphy to just pull the stops and do anything. He's the kind of a coach that you like to watch his team play because they're up for a Outside, lot of surprises throughout DC this afternoon. Number four, they won't play it according major to Major foul, face mask, number 10, Winnipeg. Down repeated. They won't play it according to Hoyle. Back at the 51, it's now second and 14. 
Don, you were talking about Glenn Jackson. He hasn't been in the ball game yet. I've been watching him over on the sideline. He's a little antsy. You know he wants to play, but he just must not be healthy enough. Bob Cameron, who on the season possessed almost a 47-yard punting average, ready to go in should he be called upon. Winnipeg needs 14 on the second down play. There's the pass. And the catch is made by Joe Poplowski. James Murphy and Joe Poplowski were in the same area. James Murphy's going to clear that area. He's going to go deep and open it up for Poplowski to come into. But watch the catch Poplowski made. What happened is Murphy got bumped and didn't get deep fast enough. And Poplowski makes a great catch. Well, it looks like a hidden ball trick. A gain of 20 as Joe Poplowski keeps the bomber drive alive. First and 10 from the 31 of the D.C. Lions. The Lions lead it by a score of 3-0 with 9.30 remaining in this opening quarter. James Sykes drives his way to the 25-yard line. He's stopped there by Rick Clausen. You know, the first game that Sykes played, you could tell that he hadn't been playing for several weeks. And that last week, he got 124 yards, and he starts to hit his stride. Now he looks like the Sykes of old. This is only the third game for James Sykes since being picked up by the Blue Bombers as an injury replacement for Willard Reeves. The veteran now, Wilson, watching anxiously from the sidelines. Movement at the line of scrimmage again, and Mac Miller was into that farmer backfield before the ball had been snapped. Now, is it offside or procedure against Winnipeg? John Buck indicates that it is against the D.C. Lions. Well, we'll see. If you see Mac Moore, I think there's no doubt about it, it's the D.C. Lions. Well, that bond took it off a blow, too. The centers aren't expecting something like that. Outside, BC number 78, first down. Well, of course, that's in reference to the fact that the gorilla at the Dallas Zoo picked the BC Lions to win this Western final against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. That hit screen to Boyd. Boyd doing some fine running to pick up a couple of yards when it appeared as though he was going to be struck for a loss. That's an excellent play by Jojo Heath. Did he come up there in a hurry? And that's what you have to do. Winnipeg made so many yards with this last week, you can't allow him to get those blockers set. Watch 26 come in low, try to get a hold of that leg. Boyd made a good move to get away from him, pick up one yard. And this is the play that was so successful for both he and Murphy last week. Second and nine, Winnipeg. Wide open is Joe Kowalski. He's got a first down inside the 10. Brought down there by Nelson Martin. What you saw, Don, you saw it. the BC Lions really showed their safety blitz early, and Tom Clements is too smart for that, along with Rick Owls. He went down and went to the outside, and that puts him in trouble. Watch the blitz coming. They got everybody and their brother coming after Clements. He gets rid of it in a hurry. That outside receivers came across there at two and just kind of got in the way of the defender trying to go out Nelson Martin to, to pick up uh, Rick House on his breakout pattern. It's first and goal Winnipeg from just inside the 10-yard line. Clements into the end zone. Touchdown, Joe Kaplowski. who was an instrumental figure in this drive, made a big catch on a second down conversion in the end zone for the touchdown on the throw from Tom Clements. And Tom is running to his left. It's very difficult to make this throw. He turns back, gets his shoulders turned upfield and gets it in the end zone. And Poplowski and Murphy are right together there, but Poplowski comes down with the ball. Trevor Kennard with the point after. He puts it through. So with 7.24 remaining in this opening quarter, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers at least temporarily have silenced the full house here at the stadium at BC Place, and we'll be back with the Winnipeg kickoff after this. If you want it, I like it. If you really like it, I really like it. We can help you get it. We're GMAC. We want it. GMAC Financing. GMA 
AC is helping more and more people buy their new GM car or truck with rates that make sense on models people want, all at your GM dealer. If you really want it, we can help you get it. We're GMAC Financing. We got it. When Apple invented the personal computer, we were all alone in the world. But soon it seemed that everybody was trying to build a better Apple. Well, somebody finally did. Lisa from Apple. So advanced it puts us right back where we started. Alone again. Soon there'll be just two kinds of people. Those who use computers and those who use apples. CBC, the place to be for the 1983 Grey Cup, the Shenley Awards, the parade from Vancouver, then from the spectacular BC Place, it's the thrill of it all, pre-game show, and the game itself, CBC's got it covered. Trevor Kennard preparing to kick off for the Blue Bombers following the Tom Clements to Joe Poposki touchdown, Winnipeg in front, 7-3. Crawford preparing to return the kickoff from the 12-yard line. He finds the running room down the sidelines, and he got out to the 39. He was stopped there by Chris Waldy. Clements start out to his left, and the most difficult thing for a right-handed passer is to throw until he gets those shoulders turned up field. Watch it. Gets the shoulders turned up field, gets the ball down in the end zone, and Poplowski and, and Murphy are both down there, but when you throw it up and there's two good receivers down there, they got a chance to come down with it, just like Joe did. Back to the live action. First down from the 38. Ernan Paul and Doug McIver both got in to drop Ray Strong for a loss of a couple of yards. This Winnipeg defense appears to be fired up this afternoon. You want to know something, though, Don? Before the game, the Vancouver team come out there and were jumping around and acting like they were going to lose their mind, and Winnipeg looked like they were settled. And as a result, Moore made a mistake jumping off the balance, and then Winnipeg is uh, very composed out there. But they, as you say, they're up, too. can't take that long to throw the football when you're going to throw it in the middle. Roy DeWalt went back in the pocket, had lots and lots of time, but as long as he took the throw the football, allowed Aaron Brown and those linebackers to get deep. Watch out how much time DeWalt has. Look, he's looking around. Now he goes to throw, and Aaron Brown just cuts right in front. Boy, he's been a heck of a football player for those Bombers this year. You better put something on it when you throw it in his area because he can go to the football. He's got that speed that when in the flight of the ball, he'll go get it. John Henry White was the intended receiver, and Aaron Brown, the Ohio State grad, who was in his first full season with Winnipeg, provides the Bombers with first and ten at 20 of the D.C. line. Clements roll out to his right here. He's so good at doing this and improvising. Looks like he's getting away from the defender and going to run now, but at using the experience that he has, looks downfield and watch him drill it in there. Right into Boyd's numbers. You just can't put it in there any better than that. So the Winnipeg Blue Bombers with two quick touchdowns here in the opening quarter. 6-0-1 is the time remaining. The point after by Trevor Kennard. And the Bombers are now in front 14-3. And will return to the stadium at BC Place and the Winnipeg kickoff after this. You've got about five square yards of real estate to cover. And sometimes it feels like five square miles. But right from the first time you played, you knew you'd found your game. And right from the first time you tried OB, we'll bet you'd found your beer. That's why you just say OB for that great tasty beer. OB, OB, oh yeah, you just say OB. Country's hottest.
biggest hits and brightest stars create Super Country 83 starring Hank Jr. Country plowboy, not a urban cowboy. The Bellamy Brothers. Conway Twitty, Crystal Gale, and T.G. Shepard. Eddie Rabbit, Donna Fargo, John Anderson, Mel Tillis, and Emmy Lou Harris. Take last dance Gale Davies. Look for Super Country 83 and other hot albums from KTEL in a store near you. Next Saturday afternoon on Sports Weekend, more horse show coverage from the Royal Winter Fair in Toronto. From Vancouver Live, the 1983 Grey Cup Parade. And from Toronto, we continue the 1983 Superstars. That's next week on Sports Weekend. Sails to Crawford down near the goal area. And Crawford is stopped at the 25. Kickoff of 63 yards by Trevor Kennard. Sean Kehoe was in there to make the tackle on Larry Crawford. And while this was a very noisy crowd at the start of the ball game, it is very quiet here at the stadium at BC Place right now. A 22-yard run back by Larry Crawford. Well, that's what Tom Clements has done. He's playing a typical Clements ball game. He'll nickel and dime you, scramble out of trouble, make big plays, and that takes this crowd out of the ball game, and that's to Winnipeg's advantage. That's what Winnipeg was hoping to do early. Get some points and silence the crowd. And right now, as I said, they are very quiet. DeWald on first down. DeWald can't find a receiver. He's in some trouble. Cut by John Kreider. Dug off the pass away. And it's incomplete, intended for Ray Strong. But DeWalt was in trouble. He had enough time to throw the football, but there were no, no receivers open downfield. That Winnipeg secondary is doing a job down there, and they are putting the heat on them. Well, look up there at the score. It's 14 to 3. And now, now you tell the medal of a football team, just like those Toronto Argonauts today. Now, they came back when they got behind, and that's what BC has to do. defense make the mistake. That's what he's doing. That's what Cal Murphy said to us prior to the game. They can talk all they want about our garbage offense, but it's Tom Clemens who makes it happen. Hand off to James Sykes. And Leo, you made an observation earlier that James Sykes in the last game and so far in this one appears to be running like the James Sykes of old, and I concur. Boy, he didn't have much to go on right there, but he found that little seam in there and turned up field and got himself about six yards, maybe seven. It will be second and three. Sykes had 124 yards last week in the semifinal win over Edmonton. Ball is at the 53, the pitch to James Sykes again. He dives for the midfield strike. Mac Moore pulled the feet out from under the Winnipeg running back, and now... Will the Bombers kick it away, or will they gamble on third and about a yard? Boy, I bet they better kick it. Well, 
obvious thing. You've got a pipeline to the Winnipeg bench, Leo, because Cal Murphy is sending in the punting unit. Looks almost two yards. Yeah, it's kick that football. Can't take a chance. Playing well, right? Especially when you're ahead like this, too, huh? You, you know you're going to, with this kid, you're going to get pretty good field position down there if you get any kind of coverage at all. 3.57, the time remaining in this opening quarter. It's 14 to 3, Winnipeg leading. Jojo Heath and Crawford are back for the third down punt by Bob Cameron. As I said before, though, Don, it's important now, and it's going to show the medal of the BC Lions to just settle down and come back now. They're a good football team. They've won a lot of games. They're not going to let 14 points break them down. Jojo Heath is caught back at the five-yard line. John Keogh had hold of his leg. Heath tried to get up to about the seven or eight-yard line, and he may have actually been successful in getting that far, but he was in the grasp of Sean Kehoe. Well, Roy DeWalls has not been able to generate much offense so far. That opening kickoff fumbled by Kirby Wilson, somewhat reminiscent of the first time these two teams met here at the stadium at BC Place, as the opening kickoff was fumbled by Winnipeg on the three-yard line, and the Lions went on to the 44-6 route. However, in this ball game, the Bomber defensive unit held, and the Bombers have been putting the points on the board. Incomplete. Pass was intended for Ray Strong. It will be second and ten. Don, a great deal of enthusiasm down here at the Winnipeg Blue Bomber bench. I think part of their success in the early going in this football game might go back to last week and having played in a semifinal. The BC Lions a little lethargic uh, as they look uh, at this football game right now. Well, John, Ron Lancaster and I and Leo were talking about that before the game. If you could be assured that you were going to go through a semifinal game and win and not suffer any serious injuries, I think you'd want to be playing. Right, Ron? You bet. You've got to play every week. Second down, out of the end zone, there's the screen pass to John Henry wide, and he'll be very close to the first down. Let's see where they mark it. The Lions needed that one. It may be close enough to require a measurement. Bud Ulrich, the referee this afternoon. You never know what are big plays and what aren't. But when you're backed up in your own zone like this, they hit a little screen pass to John Henry. He gets turned upfield. This guy's been doing it for him for a few years. And it's a little bit close. We're going to see what happens. But you've got to move that ball away from your own goal line when you're backed up. Well, you see how far this is. What do you think? Well, Donnie Matthews is going to go, go for it. we got to get it. Well, I'll tell you one thing. There's no tomorrow if you don't get this one in, in a lot of cases. He says if we're going to give the team any confidence at all, there's you know, less than a half a yard to go. Let's go get it. That took a little bit of pressure off the wall that last pass. Now, if they make this first down, they may settle down and you know, start coming back as a football team. They've been too good all year to just collapse in a game here in front of all these people. They have to get outside the 17-yard line for the first down. A third down gamble here for the Lions. There you got it. DeWalt keeps it and gets the first down. 2.28 is the time remaining. Don Matthews, the rookie head coach at the Lions. He took the job on the 4th of January, 1983. He's done a great job, too. And as far as DeWalt is concerned, all the pressure from getting out from under that goal line was on him. He got him to within a yard, and then was, he was called upon to make the first down. This has got to bolster his confidence a little bit. Fernandez comes out wide to the right. The ball to John Henry White, forced out of bounds by Vernon Paul, very close to the first down again. John, we talked before the ball game that we thought they'd use John Henry Wright and Strong as pass receivers. The reason for that is they can double receivers outside, but you're never going to get double coverage on the back. It's him and a linebacker. You'll see the ball thrown to him, and who's chasing him? Vernon Paul. So you got to hope that you can beat the linebacker. And you can almost, without harping on this, you can almost watch the wall settle down now and get the feel of the ball game. He's taking him out from the goal, goal line. This is a good sign as far as he's concerned. On first down, John Henry White again. And he does an excellent job of fighting his way out to the 38. He'll be close to another first down. 
credit John Henry White with a gain of nine before being stopped by Donovan Rose. Just a quick sprint. White goes straight out in the flat, and then it's up to him, puts a good move on pointer, gets outside, picks up about eight or nine yards. But I think that the wall is, as Leo said, is settled down, staying with the game plan, don't panic, but they have moved it away from the goalpost, and that's what they needed to do. Well, the D.C. Lions have the number one offense in the CFL this season, scoring 477 points. On second down, Strong should have the first down. It appears as though he got to the 40-yard line. With 40 seconds remaining in the opening quarter, Winnipeg leads it by a score of 14-3. And in case you missed it, the Toronto Argonauts will be here one week from today, representing the Eastern Conference following their 41-36 triumph over the Hamilton Tiger Cats. What a tremendous ball game at CNE Stadium. A record crowd of over 54,000 Rock Scotland. Almost 60,000 jammed into the stadium here at BC Place for this one. And, of course, there'll be 60,000 next Sunday as well. Great enough tickets are definitely out of premium. The ball for Tommy Rose hit from behind by Tony Norman. It appeared as though he had the time to go deep, and he was hit by Tony Norman and dropped for a loss of about seven. And that is also the final play of the opening quarter. Winnipeg Blue Bombers with an 11-point edge on the British Columbia Lions. You'd give anything just to take a breather. But you know you'd be giving too much to the other team. But right from the first time you played, you knew you had found your game. And right from the first time you tried OB, we'll bet you had found your beer. That's why you just say OB for that great tasting beer. OB, OB, oh yeah, you just say OB. This is the M1, England's busiest motorway. The M1 has the highest accident rate in all of Britain. But here's an amazing fact. There's an automobile tire used on the M1 that provides such extra safety, a car insurance company actually offers lower premiums to people who use them. What kind of tires? Goodyear. We want you to have the best radio tires in the world. to start the second quarter in this Western Championship game. The winner, of course, will face the Toronto Argonauts next Sunday in the Grey Cup game, and you'll see it on CBC Television as CBC Television produces Grey Cup 83 from this magnificent facility here on the West Coast. Can you imagine the emotion connected with that game over in Toronto today against those two arch rivals? Must have really been something right down to the wire. Second and 16. They had the pressure on, but he got the three pass away. A good defensive move by linebacker Vernon Paul. Well done. You saw John Pointer and those linebackers coming on that blitz. And DeWalt dumped it real quick. But boy, what a defensive play by that man, Vernon Paul. Or there's big yardage to be gained. I don't think Vernon Paul really has received the recognition for the job he has done at the linebacking position this year for Winnipeg. Tyrone Jones, Aaron Brown, and John Pointer have been the more highly publicized, but the University of Prince Edward Island product has been very, very steady. Well, they're a man-for-man -man coverage on that. Paul had the pullback. That's right on it. Boy, it's just a good thing he fought off the block because everybody else was cleared. That would have been a long game. Great hit by Pataglia. Bennett retreats all the way to the line. Pretty good job of running it back. He gets to the 27. Kirby Wilson threw a good block on Nelson Martin to enable Bennett to get outside. Well, anytime you're going to receive punts, that's the man you want handling the football for you. He's had such a great career in returning punts. Very reliable and dependable. Lou Pisaglia has indoor punting taste pretty well, though. He averaged about 50 yards on the season. A lot of that substantial yardage coming in this building. Well, he still had to venture outside of this building eight times during the course of the year, John, and he had better than a 50-yard punting average. But in the dome, he has been superb. That was a 62-yard kick. Winnipeg again with all of that motion. Jeff Boyd out of 
the 45-yard line, and he was able to hang on. Boy, he threw it right down there, right in the middle of a lot of orange shirts, but Boyd again, and Clemens has got a lot of confidence in those receivers. If he, even if they're covered, he throws it down there and lets them go up after it. And just like Poplowski down the end zone, he went up and got that ball. Well, you're going to see his own defense. Boyd just turns in between the linebackers and secondary. Clements gets it to the high spot, and Boyd goes up and gets it. Well, that's great. You have to have a lot of confidence in a guy to do that. That's for sure. From the 39 and a half, 44 and a half, little swing pass intended for James Sykes, incomplete. Well, I'll tell you one thing, that almost was a lateral. I'm surprised that that defender there didn't pick the ball up and try to run with it just to test the officials on that. So it will be second and 10, Winnipeg, from the 44 and a half. Winnipeg leading by a score of 14-3. That's the first pass that Clemens has missed this afternoon. And it wasn't his fault. <laughs> well, he got the pressure in a hurry. It's one of those slip screens. He's just going to throw it out there and let him run. protested to the official that he had been interfered with but there was no flag and Winnipeg is forced into a punting situation but Clements had lots of time well Boot you see him take that first look Leo bootleg actually throws off the wrong foot and everything else and still drills it down in there but just a tip it would have been another great play by Clements they've got 11 people up the BC Lions have for this third down punt The fuel injected Fiero. Fiero, North America's first two passenger mid engine production car. Pontiac 6000 STE, Euro style touring sedan. Sophistication, high tech performance. Pontiac 2000 Sunbird SE. Unleash its fuel-injected turbo power. Firebird. Feel the rush of pure excitement with Trans Am. For 1984, Pontiac builds excitement. Well, we're sitting here in comfort. It's a shirt-sleeve crowd at the stadium at BC Place, and it will be that way next week for the Grey Cup game. Just think, Leo, 12 years ago, if you would have had this facility, you might have won a Grey Cup game. We'd have whooped <laughs> them if we had a dry field. Out. <laughs> First and 10 for the Lions. They are at the 25-yard line. middle quickly to John Henry wide and he'll have a gain of about eight John Pointer made the tackle Ron you had an opportunity to talk with Don Matthews before the game was this in their plan to use John Henry wide as a receiver as much as they have yeah I talked to Don and to Adam Reeder their offensive coordinator and they wanted the wall to stick with the high percentage passes the short ones use the backs get them one-on-one -on -one with the linebackers until they can figure out the Winnipeg defense because the defense didn't allow them to throw long Wald has completed six passes. Five of them have gone to John Henry White. Movement at the line of scrimmage. Winnipeg will be charged with an offside. It appeared as though Tyrone Jones jumped prior to the ball being snapped. 14-3. Winnipeg leads up two quick touchdowns in the opening quarter. One by Joe Poplowski. The other by Jeff Boyd. Boy, look at Aaron Brown fill that hole. They tried to just run straight at him, but Aaron Brown met it head on. 
Offside, Winnipeg, number 69, first down. So with an offside, it is first and 10 from the 38. I believe I'd be tempted to go for a long one to Fernandez or one of those wide receivers just to loosen them up a little bit. Well, not as deep as those backs are. Let me look at it. That's what you want. Incomplete intended for John Pancratz. Well, they had the ideal play for the ideal defense, and he just couldn't get it to Pancratz. They had that area cleared out. Just do it low. Roy DeWalt, 6 of 11 for 50 yards. And of course, one interception. That interception by Aaron Brown paved the way for a Winnipeg touchdown. 11.32, the time remaining in the half. 14-3, Winnipeg League, second and 10 BC. The Lions at the 138. The ball broken over the middle to Fernandez. First down. this play here is if you give any quarterback that much time, there's going to be a receiver break open. It takes an awful good defense to cover people down there like that. Then it made the tackle, but, you know, he was coming across against it. Watch McIver come in here, number 64, and he gets double teamed. You know, when you spin off of a block and you're delighted to face another guy and he's waiting there in a leverage position, he can really do a job on him. He's got a job to on him that time. He's Mervin Mervin Fernandez, the Lions' leading receiver in 1983. Green is caught and hauled down by, or uh, DeWalt is hauled down by Sturdivant at the midfield stripe. Sammy Green been the Lions' leading receiver up until late in the year when, for some as yet unexplained reason, he and the Lions parted company. And John Sturdivant, a recent addition to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, playing that defensive end spot in place of the injured Pete Cake. That's a right. down quarterback Roy DeWald and limited his gain to about a yard and a half. Second, eight and a half. Complete. Intended for Jacques Chapdelaine. Ned Armour tried to uh, grab it as well on the deflection. But the BC Lions will be forced to kick it away. And that brings in Lou Pisaglia, the possessor of a 58-yard punting average in this ballgame. with Kirby Wilson. Wilson will field it at the 10. He's tackled by Ryan Potter at the 13-yard line. So that's where the Winnipeg Blue Bombers will be scrimmaging first and 10 with 9.40 remaining in the half when we return to the stadium at BC Play. Canada. Welcome to Miller Time. Now brewed here, it's yours and mine. Bring your thirsty self right here. You got the time. We've got the beer for what you have in mind. Canada. Welcome to Miller Time. Yours and mine. Miller Highlights. Now available at regular beer prices. Canada. Welcome to Miller Time. The move is on all across Canada. Over 50,000 people a month are opening daily interest savings accounts at Bank of Montreal. I switched to earn daily interest the day I make a deposit. Interest paid monthly. That's 12 times a year. My old bank's regular savings account only paid up twice a year. That's why over 50,000 a month are opening daily interest savings accounts. Enter the super saving sweepstakes at the Bank of Montreal today. Well, an interested spectator here at the stadium is Michael Spinks. And on Friday night, as part of the Grey Cup Week celebrations, you'll be involved in a title fight against Oscar Rivadinera. Michael, are you in pretty good shape for the bout? Yes, I am. I'm in pretty good shape. Well, you have some fond remembrances, of course, of Canada. 
I harken back to 1976 in the Olympics. Oh, yeah, lots of pleasant memories. Everything started right here for me. Winning, the winning of the gold medal, and from then on, it's just been all up here for me. Well, good luck in your bout on Friday night, Michael. All right, thank you so much. Michael Spink will be involved at the Pacific Coliseum Friday night for those who may be coming out to break up 83. World Blake heavyweight champion will be going against Oscar Rebeginera. George really has him going, Don. Crazy George. Second down, Winnipeg, and about eight. For Murphy, incomplete. Larry Crawford was defending against James Murphy. He got a hand on it. Don, that was a big series for the BC Lions. They need to get some field position. Finally, they stopped the Bombers. The Bombers had been moving. This time, he tries to get a flag pattern, lays it up. But the ball's there, but the defender arrives at the same time. Now, they should get good enough field position. You cannot move the length of the field every time you get the ball. This is when they have to make their move right now. Quite a punting deal involving Bob Cameron and Lou Pisagra. Good kick by Cameron. Crawford goes back to his 45-yard line and squirms his way out to the 51. Cal Murphy, like his counterpart, Don Matthews, a rookie head coach in this 1983 season. Cal Murphy trying to win a seventh consecutive Grey Cup ring. Don Matthews trying to make it six in a row. The wall for John Henry Wide incomplete. It almost would appear, Ron, that Winnipeg in that secondary is doing a good job of covering the BC receivers, forcing DeWalt to dump it off. They did a great job there. That was a sprint out pattern. Then they want John Henry White to just check, block, and come back across the green. And DeWalt couldn't get him the football. A little bit too far. Well, there's a lot of running or a lot of passing room back there in the secondary behind the linebackers if they can hold those linebackers in a little bit. And I think they're going to try to get to it. Second and 10 from the 51 with 804 remaining in the half. exactly what I'm talking about. You go down and you work in and cross behind those linebackers and get into those holes. Fernandez is good at that. You just got to give him a little bit of time and let him look off field. And when you get those backs coming up, you can go deep. Fernandez on the sidelines with all alone. And he got up out of bounds for the first down. Forced out by Wiley Turner. Well, let's say they rule that he stepped up before he got the necessary 10 yards. It will be a gain of nine and a half. Now, this is a perfect place right here for a, for a play action pass, Rod. Because they're in position as you see him make the catch right here. Now, he should be driving right for that flag right now. He's trying to get to it, but the foot comes down just before he gets there, and it's a good call by the official. But right here, you know they're going to go for it on, on third down. So a play-action pass here into that defensive line and hold those linebackers in might get him a touchdown. That's the third catch of the day for Merv Fernandez. Fernandez down the field, and he was double covered, so that gives Pankratz one-on-one -on -one coverage over there. He went to the man with the single coverage, made it work. Yeah, they kept everybody else in and blocked him. And everybody. The play-action fake was that uh, pronounced. He could have done a little bit of a better job with the play-action fake, but he accomplished what he wanted to in getting a one-on-one -on -one down there. What the wall looked at, he wanted to see where Paul Bennett, the middle safety, went. Wherever he goes, he goes the other way. That's it. You're right. How many times have you done that? Every time you throw. The Walt had some problems earlier in this 
ball game, but he's now 10 for 17. He gets the strong and strong to the five yard line. Another first down. They look like he was shot out of a gun right here. That's what you call running to daylight and just running past people and not stopping and trying to reconnoiter but just heading for that goal line. Ray Strong, a rookie out of the University of Nevada in Las Vegas. Putting the Lions in position where they're now first and goal from the five-yard line. Moving at the line of scrimmage. Strong gets it again. But this defensive effort on the part of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Aaron Brown will go for naught as it appeared as though Winnipeg was offside. You're in a playoff game, offensively or defensively, in this part of the field, you can't make those kind of mistakes. you got to watch that football if you're on defense. Well, I'll tell you, it's, he was moving, but I don't know if he got there or not. You and Coach on that yard line, though. They'll call it. It's first and goal now from just outside. Two and a half with 5.32 remaining in the half. This is what we call three down territory down here. They're going to go for all three downs to try to get it in there. So what do you do, right? Do you throw on first down or do you just run it in there three times and let yeah. John Henry run it in there? John Henry White get it in there. John Henry White and he stops. Good defensive play there by Aaron Brown, the linebacker. It Boy. appeared as though John Henry White had a path to the end zone. You don't see a better job than that by a linebacker. He scraped off there, and it looked for all intents and purposes, Don, as you said, like he was going right in the end zone, and he met him in the hole. Well, he took the momentum. Watch the hit. Watch it out of nowhere. Boom! <laughs> I thought he was going in. Boy, that's a great defensive play. Second and goal from the one. The wall keeps. stages Dolly or Lorelai Lee, but when I'm on television, you see me at my best on the Sanyo Spectra TV. Such a sharp picture, such gorgeous color, and Sanyo makes even me look good. Which is something. In fact, if you'd ask me or Dolly or Lorelai, we'd all say that Sanyo is a star's best friend. You're the Canada in Petro Canada. You own the place. You're the Canada in Petro Canada. You're the smiling face. You're the one we're fresh and bright for. That special friend we do it right for. You're the reason we're good at pleasing. You are Petro Canada. Round the corner most every day. We'll help you on your way. You are Petro Canada. We're working for you. Petro Canada. It's ours. BC Place will provide a beautiful setting for Grey Cup 83, and you won't miss a moment on CBC Television. Thursday, the first time ever, coast-to-coast -coast coverage of the...
of the Shenley Awards. Then Saturday, a special sports weekend, the festival in the Grey Cup. Then on Sunday, we begin five hours of coverage with the thrill of it all, starting at 4 Eastern. A Grey Cup 83 on CBC. Kickoff return got up to the 26 yard line. He was stopped there by Bernie Glear. Here's another look at the Roy DeWalt touchdown. He simply followed the center, Al Wilson, into the end zone. And with that touchdown by Roy DeWalt, the crowd, 60,000 here at the stadium at BC Place, have come alive. Larry Crawford made the tackle at the 33. James Sykes, that will be a pickup of seven yards. It will be second and three Winnipeg. 4.15 is the time remaining in this opening half. Sykes has carried six times for 31 yards so far. Ron, you pointed out earlier that Glenn Jackson has not been in the ball game. I don't think he's made an appearance yet, has he? No, he hasn't. He's still over on the sideline. Boyd takes the pass and he goes out of bounds with the first down at the 44. He was wrestled down there by Jojo Heath. A gain of 11. Clements has hit on 9 of 12 for 113 yards. And you will see all the Grey Cup action on CBC television. so sure at this particular stage of the ball game, however, whether it will be the BC Lions. The pass to Jeff Boyd as he came back with an excellent move. He got his quarterback out of trouble and converted it into a first down. Almost made the mortal sin, though, in making that move. He almost stepped back and didn't get his first down. Luckily, he didn't reach back and get it. But Clements, again, making something out of nothing. Should have been tackled three times back here. Comes back to meet the ball. That's the fifth time that Boyd has hauled in a pass this afternoon. He now has 61 yards. 3.05 is the time remaining in the half. It's first and 10. Winnipeg at the midfield strike. Mac Moore jumped offside. So Winnipeg will be looking at a first and five situation from the BC 50 when we return. Flowers. They're so simple, yet they can say so much. With flowers, a friendship can blossom. A room in your home can be brightened. A flower can garnish a lapel. Or just let someone know you really care. You can give flowers for any occasion. But you really don't have to have a reason. You can give flowers for no reason at all. Flowers from Fines. A gift for any season. And for no reason at all. The mushroom, fat Albert, putting on the cheese, fat Albert, putting on all the trimmings, fat, fat Albert, if you please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause we're putting it on so fresh and fine, submarines and pizzas of every kind. Fat Albert, fat, fat Albert, walk away satisfied. Walk away satisfied. Well, a special halftime show in Vancouver today. First highlights from the Eastern Final, then live to Toronto with Brian Williams in conversation with Bob Obilovich, head coach of the Eastern champion Toronto Argonauts. As well, highlights from an exciting first half in Vancouver. Indeed, it has been exciting, John. It's first and five from the 50-yard line. James Sykes trying to get outside. He turns the corner with a first down to the 39. Forced out by Andre Jones. He couldn't have done this three weeks ago. His legs were in good enough shape, but that time he went down the line of scrimmage and just outran some pretty fast defensive backs and made the corner and turned it upfield. You know, Sykes never looks like he's moving fast, but I'll tell you, as you say, he outruns some pretty good speed back there. He sure did. James Sykes, an emergency replacement for the injured rookie Willard Raves, a former Blue Bomber ball boy, Cy Wolfman, his agent, living in Los Angeles, responsible for getting James Sykes into the lineup of the Blue Bombers. Clements is in trouble, but he ducks away from...
from Reset. Throws the pass. It's picked up. wish he didn't throw this and he took an awful lick after he did throw it but it's the old tip drill deflected by the intended receiver Jeff Boyd now watch him hit right after he throws it right there Vaughn came in and Ely laid it on him and Tommy felt that when he came off there he's Vaughn. gone to the Winnipeg bench Tom Clements has favoring that left shoulder that collarbone that was broken earlier in the air the wall to the sidelines incomplete. He made a great throw throwing that away because Pointer was in perfect position to intercept. He threw that out as far as he could go. It's not quite to the stand, but it was in that direction. Well, at that Winnipeg bench, trainer Pat Clayton tending to Tom Clements. They were looking at his left shoulder. Clements appears to be in pain. John Huffnagel is warming up. Taking a look at the situation close up hand. Incomplete. It was intended for Ned Armour. And the BC Lions will be forced into a punting situation. David Shaw was defending. Not a bad time to sit Tom Clements out. 222 left in the first half. Let him sit out. Let Huffnagel win. Finish his half. Give him a chance to check Clements out or real well. And a good point on that, Ron, is that uh, Huffnagel doesn't have a lot of pressure on him going in because he's going to get pretty good field position here. Well, John Wells is standing by down at that BC bench, and uh, perhaps he can give us an indication as to what the concern is as far as Clemens goes. John? Well, they're checking out Clemens' shoulder, Don, and there's uh, great concern down here right now, although Clemens seemed to be in a great deal of pain when he came up. He was a little more relaxed as he rested a little bit. Bernie Gleer grabbed that ball at the 46-yard line. I don't know what he could have possibly been thinking about. It had not been touched by a Winnipeg player. It immediately drew a flag. You see athletic therapist Pat Clayton talking with Tom Clements. Well, Gleer must have thought he was going to try to fool the officials and make them think that he kicked the ball or something. Well, that was an awful mindless thing to do at this point of the game because that really improves no the deep draw. DC offense. number seven, first down. So the Blue Bombers will take over at the 31 of the BC Lions and John Hoffnagel has gone in to replace Tom Clemens. Appeared to be a mix up there as Huffnagel gave it to James Sykes, but there appeared to be some confusion. Well, see, you get that when you get a new quarterback in there and he's not got his timing down exactly. Takes him a couple plays to get the field, and that's a, a cross-buck action in there. Demands a little ball handling, and it's a very difficult play to call the first play that you're in there. The pickup of three, it will be second and seven Winnipeg. Huffnagel throwing into the end zone for Jeff Boyd. It's picked up. Joe Joe Heath. Jeff Boyd knocked him into it. proved to hurt the Winnipeg Blue Bombers because they were in field goal range but Jojo Heath with the interception turns the ball over to the Lions with now a 150 remaining in the half watch this Don watch Boyd jumps and actually knocks Jojo Heath into the football well, wasn't that nice he said thank you I'll tell you when you get down there in playoff time you've got to come out with a couple points for the Lions. Jojo Heath's second interception. The ball is at the 20. Herman Fernandez, the intended receiver, he was being covered by David Shaw. Miscommunication. 
situation. DeWalt was thought he was going to go down and stop. He threw it at him. Fernandez broke to the inside. I think maybe Fernandez read blitz on that, looked to the inside and read blitz and, and broke to the inside. And, and uh, DeWalt went with the initial call, which, as you say, was a stop on the outside because he threw it where he wasn't. It will be second and 10 from the 20 with 147 remaining. The big blue bombers leading here in the first half, 14 to 10. The pass incomplete. It was intended for shop delane. And the Lions again are forced into a kicking situation. Doug McIver put a hit on the wall just as he threw the football. That may be the reason that the ball went high. Watch the wall. He's looking down the middle. You see Doug McIver gets loose. Now watch Chapdelaine take a hit. Well, Paul Bennett's been known to hit you if you come in the middle. They may, may try to block this. The last time Aaron Brown got awful close. that injury to quarterback Tom Clements. They believe it's a bruised shoulder. They're going to check it out very carefully at halftime. But Clements is not expected back in the first half, although they are not too terribly concerned about a collarbone or one of the other injuries we did talk about. Well, that's good news for Winnipeg. John Huffnagel, who was the quarterback in that 33-18 loss in Winnipeg on Thanksgiving Day, throwing deep, intended for Poplowski. You, you see who was in the back in the game finally? Glenn Jackson almost got Huffnagel before he threw it. That's about his first action today. I'll tell you what, he's an eight-year veteran, and you know he wants to be in the ballgame. Ron, from your observation, and Leo as well, Jackson perhaps coming in now because Huffnagel not quite as mobile as Tom Clements. Any, any reasoning there? No, I think Jackson's going to test that knee right now with a half coming up to see if he can go. I think Jackson just... Drove the coach nuts. Yeah, put so much heat on the coach that he said, go ahead in there, get off my back. Pass is complete to Joel Poplowski. Brought down by Jackson. Fumbles the ball. BC recovers.
got in trouble when he came back and made the catch, still picked up the first down. But at least they're going to measure it anyway. Well, he and Fernandez both are very elusive when they catch that ball on the outside. The Lions are ready to go with that hurry-up offense, but this one requires a measurement. And that gave Roy DeWalt the opportunity to go over to the sidelines and confer with his head coach, Don Matthews. It's just short of a first down. Hit on 12 of 23 attempts. Early in the ball game, he was one for seven. 36 seconds, the time remaining in the half. Winnipeg leading by a score of 14 to 10. They're going to try to get Fernandez and Armour both into the inside. Hit them from abroad. The ball keeps for the first down. When they get in there on the inside, then they can go for that field goal, put some more points on the board before they go in at halftime. That took the clock down to 29 seconds. The Lions trying to run this next play without benefit of a huddle as Don Matthews looks on. Over the middle, almost picked off by Paul Bennett. Bennett uh, must have been... Uh, he was reading somebody's mail on that one. Thinking the same thing because he was looking at it. They had double coverage on inside. Boy, Paul Bennett played it just as well as you can ask. The only thing he didn't do is catch a football. He's the Shenley nominee in the Western Conference for the Outstanding Canadian Award. 22 seconds remaining. Second and 10. The ball is at the 53. Through. Vernon Paul Deck, the BC quarterback, who was looking for Mervyn Fernandez. Vernon Paul was coming from the blind side, and he really decked Roy DeWalt. Well, he stepped up first. You'll see him step up in the pocket. There he goes. Now watch what happens. Well, those hurt. Well, that's not too many of those. That's what hurts the worst, too, when you overexpose yourself after following through at that throw. Paul's having a great first half. There have been some outstanding individual performances through the first 30 minutes of this Western Championship game. One of them by Lewis and Saglio. Hits this one into the end zone. Paul Benham will get it out of the end zone. Turns it to the 11-yard line with three seconds remaining in the half. So I think it's safe to assume that on this final play of the first half, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers will simply run out the clock, quite content, head to the dressing room, leading by four. Get to the quarters and regroup for the final 30 minutes of this Western Championship with the winner going on to face the Toronto Argonauts one week from today in the Grey Cup game. And, of course, you'll see all the excitement of Grey Cup 83 on CBC television. One second remains. the change of possession the clock does not start until the ball is snapped and it took just two seconds for Huffnagel to get back and get down both coaches John Matthews and Cal Murphy having already removed the headset and now the teams will head to the dressing room with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers leading after 30 minutes of play by a score of 14 to 10. Now, stay tuned for our halftime show. Bonanza sale. 
We just made a special factory purchase of big and little pickups, vans, blazers, and 4 by 4s There's a whole yard of trucks just waiting for you here at Myers, And you'll see those special, special savings right up front on every windshield. And to keep you warm this winter, we'll give you this super trucker's vest with every purchase of a new truck during our big sale. At Myers, our number one objective is your complete satisfaction. Our future depends on it. Last October, I turned on the furnace. Sounds like a top for two hours. I called HFC. They specialize in loans. I switched to a gas furnace. Government helped me with a grant, and HFC took care of the rest. I'm doing the best I can in these times, and HFC is helping me along the way. HFC! We're here to help along the way. It is halftime in the Western Final out at BC Place in Vancouver from CFL Control in Toronto. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brian Williams. Toronto head coach Bob Obilovich and a couple of his victorious players are joining me here in the studio. We'll talk with them in just a minute. First of all, let's look at highlights from just a tremendous Eastern Final this afternoon. Toronto beating Hamilton 41-36. In the first quarter, though, it looked like Hamilton would run Toronto right out of the stadium. The opening drive rocked 3-for-3 three three for 59 yards, including this 41-yard touchdown to the Eastern Rookie of the Year, Johnny Shepard. It was 7-0. Still in the first quarter, Johnny Shepard strikes again, this time running around the right side. After one quarter, 15 to one Hamilton. Terry Greer received double coverage, so in the second quarter, Holloway passing to Canadian Paul Pearson out of UBC. Argos trailed 15-8. Hamilton refused to die, brought to Brigham Young rookie Scott Colley, 22-8 Hamilton. Terry Greer, though, finally does get open in that second quarter. Greer, the touchdown from Codridge Holloway. The Argonauts were trailing 22-15. They went into the locker room at halftime, trailing the Hamilton Ticats. In the third quarter, they came to life. And I'll tell you, the screen passes were devastating to Cedric Mitter. He also runs. Here's Mitter going in for a touchdown to tie it at 23. Hamilton comes back again. Touchdown number three for rookie Johnny Shepard. It was 30 to 23. Here is the play of the game. Fourth quarter, beauty. Holloway, Emmanuel Tolbert. The game is tied 33-33. Argo's got a point on the ensuing kickoff. This field goal by Bernie Ruoff made it 36-34 Hamilton. The Argos go down. Here's a gamble on third and inches. Instead of going for the field goal, it was successful. And it sets up the winning touchdown. 27 seconds to play. In goes Cedric Mitter. An outstanding football game this afternoon. The Toronto Argonauts will go to the Grey Cup for the second year in a row. And the crowd at Exhibition Stadium, 54,530. An all-time Argo record going absolutely crazy. Well, they're a little tired, a little out of breath, but joining me here in the studio, Argonaut head coach Bob Obilovich, quarterback Condridge Holloway, and their outstanding defensive player of 1983, Rick Moore. We'll talk with the fellas, find out about today's game, and look ahead to the Grey Cup as our halftime show continues from CFL Control and Control. <laughs> a party? Then come down to the Paper Mart, Ottawa's complete paper and party supply store. You'll be amazed at the large selection of paper disposables and party goods available for every occasion. Weddings, showers, birthdays, anniversaries, and banquets. Let the Paper Mart turn your next party into a special event. I love the Paper Mart. So are you. Now at two convenient locations to serve you.
We continue live from our control center in Toronto. Let's begin with head coach Bob Abilovich. Were you surprised that Hamilton played you so tough? No, I wasn't really surprised, Brian. Uh, you know, they had a lot of good uh, veteran players on that team. Uh, Brock uh, played an outstanding football game, and uh, I thought psychologically they had everything going for him going into that football game. And uh, uh, I'd just like to uh, congratulate uh, Coach Bruno, his staff, and players because that was a heck of an Eastern final. They should be congratulated. Condridge Holloway, they were <coughs> very well prepared. Because Hamilton was so well prepared, what changes were you forced to make on offense? Well, they, w we made a few changes, but not that many. They, they, since Coach Bruno has taken over, they've been fairly consistent with their defensive scheme. Uh, before, they were very inconsistent, so that it wasn't like they made a change. We knew what basic defenses they were going to run. All right, what about Terry Greer, though? He received double coverage. You had to move him inside, I think? Well, he, he received... When, when people make up... When defensive coordinators make up a scheme to cover somebody double coverage-wise outside, yeah. and you move him to an inside position, it throws off their, their basic scheme. They have to cover him now with somebody else or bring somebody from all the way outside to inside, which you don't want to do. And we just thought we'd give him a little mix-up. And what we did sometimes with, was end up getting Terry one-on-one -on -one coverage because we did move him inside. Rick Moore, are you surprised they were able to move the football against your defense? I mean on the ground and in the air. Well, I wasn't really surprised. I knew that, you know, Hamilton has been improving, but uh, our goal was, was to stop Dieter Brock, and uh, we had a tough time doing it. Dieter was getting rid of the ball quick and uh, made for a long afternoon, but, you know, going into the uh, third quarter at, at halftime, we were saying all we have to do is get the offensive ball, and we knew they were going to score, and that was our whole objective in the second half, was just to shut them down, get the offense ball, and they knew it. Did you make any particular adjustments in your coverage? Uh, in the coverage, I don't really know <laughs> too much about the <laughs> All coverage. right, Coach, you talk <laughs> about the <laughs> coverage. <laughs> All right. That's right. Uh, Rick was more concerned with trying to get pressure on Dieter, <laughs> right. but we did have to make some adjustments. I, really, our, our defense secondary didn't play very well. We made a lot of mistakes, probably more mistakes in any one game than we've made all year, and... Uh, Fortunately, we really stressed the team concept, and it was one of those days where the offense and special teams had to play that much better. Uh, we've had games this year where the defense has been really uh, dominant for us to help us win games. So uh, we did make enough adjustments in the second half, and particularly in the last quarter, I thought we did come on strong. We covered them a lot tougher. Less than a minute to play, third and inches. Alisic is on the field to kick a field goal. Holloway and Obilovich, you look to be arguing about something as we watched it here in TV. What was going on on the sidelines? Well, basically, we're trying to get Conrad Jordan. <laughs> no, what happened, uh, uh, initially, we thought we had, uh, I thought we had more than a yard, uh, and the field goal team went out. And then when I was talking to Ed Klebeck, our spotter up above, uh, Ed said he said it was, you know, about a foot, he thought. So that's when I called timeout and called Conridge over and uh, to, you know, know exactly a decision like that. Uh, you know, it, it certainly uh, required a timeout to get everything organized. And uh, my biggest concern was is that, you know, even if we kicked the field goal with 53 seconds, the way Brock was playing, uh, they still had plenty of time to go down and kick a winning field goal. A couple of head coaches standing by out in British Columbia, Ron Lancaster and Leo Cahill. They would like to ask some questions of Rick Moore, Condridge Holloway, and Bob Abilovich. Uh, take it away in B.C., fellas. Well, first of all, congratulations to the Toronto Argonauts. That was a great comeback. And I want to ask you, uh, Bob Abilovich, I thought that early in the ball game, when Conridge had the double coverage on Greer and the other key receivers, and he went to Paul Pearson, I thought that was an important thing for him to do. Well, we worked, uh, we had the two weeks in preparation for the game, and uh, we felt they would probably be paying a lot of extra attention to Terry, and, uh, you know, because we stress a team-oriented offense, uh, we thought our other receivers would have big games, and uh, uh, and then we did some things with Terry so that, you know, he would still be an integral part of the offense and him scoring a touchdown, uh, you know, was a part of that. And uh, we did a good job of adjusting to what they did coverage-wise. Bob, let me ask you now. It's, I want to first add my congratulations, as Leo did. But now that the, the final is over, you had two weeks off since your regular season game to the final. If you could play the semifinal and know you're going to win it, would you like to play or do you like the two weeks off? Well, that's always tough, Ronnie, because, you know, you lose that little uh, momentum when you win. That, when you win, I think you like to keep on playing, but really, in all seriousness, uh, we were really happy uh, getting the bye because we had some players, uh, E.T., Emmanuel Tolbert, and Paul Pierce, and we had several guys that were really on the limp, and uh, I don't think they'd have been 100% if we'd had to play that week right after. 
Did you think your team came out at the beginning of the football game sharp? Were they sharp right at the start, in your opinion? I felt that our, our team was ready to play, and maybe we were even, even uh, up a little too much. But I, I think the biggest thing was that Brock just did such a great job on us, and uh, uh, we made so many errors in our coverages that it gave them some momentum. But we really felt we could move the football on them offensively. And as long as we kept our poise, I felt that was the important thing because Hamilton played a darn good football game. Any Rock, questions for the players, Rock you fellas? can't throw the football. <laughs> I, I like to ask one question to the players. You played on what looked like kind of an inclement field there this afternoon. Isn't it going to be nice to come out here where we're at this afternoon and know that you're going to have great field conditions? You got that right, man. I'll tell you, it's, <laughs> it, Amen. It's for not only for throwing the ball, but I'm sure Hank and our kicking team would like that, too. Leo and Ronnie, we're running out of time. We thank you in Vancouver. From the players, let's uh, get a look ahead to next week. Do you have any preference? Rick Moore, do you prefer Winnipeg or BC? It doesn't really matter to me. Uh, I'm just glad that we're there, and uh, you know we'll see what happens the rest of the game, and who knows. Condridge, either team present particular problems for you? Uh, well, no, I'd, I'd be, I'm honored to be able to play either one, but I did get a call from Kathy Clements, and Tommy's two kids need new shoes. So, so he's, he, he, needs, he needs that paycheck next yeah. weekend. <laughs> All right, Clements is hurt right now. You know, he might not be in next week. Our congratulations to the Toronto Argonauts. We thank head coach Bob Abilovich, quarterback Conrad Holloway, and their outstanding defensive player in 1983, Rick Moore, for joining us in our studio. Stay with us. Our halftime show will continue after this. Money can't buy everything, but you'll be surprised at what you can rent. the easier way. And now, the breakthrough in music for your car. Alpine Car Audio Systems. Electronically tuned FM AM cassette decks that deliver rich, live music sound. Seven band graphic equalizers. Bridgeable amplifiers for expanded high power. And the Alpine collection of powerful, clean subwoofers and speakers. Higher fidelity car audio systems from Alpine. Only your Alpine dealer has them. Buying a family home is not a simple investment, it's an investment in the future. McDonald Homes has traditionally recognized the value of a family home. And today, an eye to the future remains its hallmark. From the single family homes and condominiums to high rise and commercial projects, McDonald Homes has earned a reputation for excellence with a strong commitment to quality and value. Before you invest in the future, think McDonald Homes, Ottawa's quality home builders for more than 24 years. Half time of the Western Final at BC Place in Vancouver. Let's go back to Vancouver for highlights. Don Whitman, British Columbia, coming on strong. Winnipeg looked awfully tough, but they could be in some trouble now. Well, the Blue Bombers started well in that first quarter. They got two quick touchdowns, but turnovers definitely hurt Winnipeg in that second quarter. Three times they gave the ball away, three times when they were in position, perhaps, to put points on the board. And that could prove, in the long run, to be their downfall. Statistically, in terms of net offense, 188 yards for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, 137 yards for the British Columbia Lions. And the second half, we understand, will be in the hands of John Huffnagel as Tom Clements, who suffered a shoulder injury, will not be back in the second half. And that could very definitely be a blow to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Let's see what they have for highlights of the first half. Here are Leo and Ron. Well, the thing that really impressed me most this first half was the intensity on the field and the hitting out there. And as Don referred to, you can't get down there as many times as Winnipeg did and come away without points. Tom Clements showed the magic out there the first half, but if he's unable to play, they'll need those points that they didn't get in the, first, in the uh, last part of that ball game. And the first highlight... Clements goes back to pass, and he reads that blitz coming. Everybody came at the kitchen sink. And it was just a breakout pattern to Poplowski, and Martin made a saving tackle there. But Clements, being the old veteran that he is, he just saw that blitz coming and threw it right to the outside there. On the next play, Clements rolls left, 
and then throws the ball in the end zone. Gets those shoulders turned upfield, gets it up high, and Boyd goes up and just gets the football. A lot of confidence in the receiver. On the next play, Aaron Brown steps in front of the receiver, makes a great interception, shows that great speed of going to the football, and takes the ball down and gets Winnipeg in position again to do something. Well, here's where Tom Clements is at his best. Watch him scramble to his right. Jeff Boyd's going to go deep into the end zone, and then he's going to come back. And watch Clements find him just across the goal line. Right in his hands, just over the white line, he makes the score of 14 to 3. PC Lions finally get field position at midfield. DeWalt marches him down the field. He finally puts it into the end zone behind Al Wilson, the 12-year veteran. He gets BC on the board to make it 14 to 10 at the half. But here's the big play. Tom Clements on a bootleg. He's going to roll out. He's going to throw the ball. It's going to be tipped by Jeff Boyd and intercepted by JoJo Heath. But the injury that Tom Clements suffers on that play is going to have a big influence on the outcome of this football game, Leo. No question about that, Ron. If Clements can't get back in that ball game, it's going to be a real imposition on the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Let's hope that he can get back in there and have the same kind of a finish that we had over East, Don. Okay, let's go back and see what Brian Williams has to say. What I have to say, Ron, is that our bags are packed. We're catching a plane. We'll talk to you people from Vancouver next week. Don't forget the Shenley Awards Thursday night on CBC, the parade Saturday afternoon, and, of course, the game on Sunday. This is our final halftime show from our CFL control in Toronto. It's a new concept this year. We hope you've enjoyed it. I would especially like to thank all our technicians that have made it possible with the satellite hookups, the people here in the studio, our production crew, and, of course, our producer, Joan Mead, for a job well done. Stay with us. The second half is yet to come. Sometimes you can tell a lot about a book by its cover. And for valuable information, you want a cover that can give you the whole story. At Forever Plastics, we've been manufacturing quality covers for more than 20 years. For governments, associations, and industry, we custom design binders, folders, briefcases, and portfolios in all shapes, sizes, and colors to suit any specification. Whether it's to catalog your line of products, price lists, or for your next convention or seminar, let Forever Plastics put a cover to your story. You know, with the price of a new car these days, last year I took a course in auto mechanics after work. It paid off. I fixed up my old car on the inside, and this year, I borrowed from HFC to spruce her up on the outside. I'm doing the best I can in these times. And HFC is helping me along the way. HFC. She's going to be beautiful. We're here to help along the way. If memory serves me correctly, there was a chill in the air that night. But inside, the fire cast a warm glow upon us all. Melissa had worked her usual magic with the flowers, the hors d'oeuvres, even the entertainment. As we lingered over coffee and I told her how perfect everything had been, she smiled and passed me an after eight. Just before the second half kickoff in this Western final between the Bombers and the Lions, Joe Poblowski of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, a touchdown in the first half. How did you look at that first half, Joe? How did you think you played it? Well, you know, it's when you get to this point of the playoffs, you know that every team's going to be a good one, and uh, it's certainly a tough game right now. There's been a lot of momentum changing in that first half, and uh, hopefully we can just regroup and uh, get the momentum going our way for the entire second half. I know the Western final is not new to Joe Poplaski, but is the feeling of playing the BC Lions different? Do the Bombers really think they've got a much better chance to win it this year? Well, the Edmonton Eskimos were always the uh, premier team in, in the uh, CFL for the past five years. Finally, they've been knocked out, and uh, now it's our turn, or BC's turn, to represent the West, and hopefully it will be our turn. Good luck in the second half. Thank Thanks you. very much to Joe Poplowski. Now, back upstairs, here's Don Whitman. Well, the crowd here at the stadium at BC Place responding to the antics of Crazy George, and as you have witnessed already through the first 30 minutes, he can certainly get them going. Tom Clements on the Winnipeg bench as the kickoff to start the second half goes to Crocker, and he fights his way out to the 37-yard line. Brought down there by John Pointer. Winnipeg, as we mentioned, four turnovers in that first half, two fumbles, two interceptions. Tom Clements has been throwing the ball down on the sidelines, but it does appear as though John, Huff John Huffnagel is going to go in 
to start this second half. Well, Leo just made a good point. If Clements is able to play, he's got to get in right away. He can't let that thing stiffen up. So we're going to see what happens whenever they get the ball. You know he wants to get in there. This is a big game. There's no tomorrow. BC Lions from their own 37. The drop play the strong big hole. Up set by Paul Bennett. He fumbles the ball. Recovered by Winnipeg. But they're ruling that he was down. They're ruling that the play was dead before the ball popped away. And the Lions retain possession at the 51. A gallop of 22 yards by Ray Strong. That guy hasn't carried the ball very much, but when he does, it looks like he's shot right out of a gun, and he knows where the goal line is. He doesn't deviate at all when he's got that straight path, and it's a good call by the officials. He was definitely down before that ball came out. Paul Bennett came up from his safety position to slice the feet out from under Ray Strong. First and 10, the Lions. John Fancraft unable to hang on. He was being covered by Donovan Rose. It will be second and 10 from the Winnipeg 51. I'm sure in this third quarter would like to strike quickly. They had some momentum going for them late in that second quarter. They'd like to see a continuation here in the second half. They trail by four. Football. That's a great catch. It looked like it bounced off his knee and he grabbed it. Now let's take a look at it. You see the ball goes to his hands. Now you'll see it come loose off his foot. And he's got it. Nobody will ever know. He's back with the camera. For all the purposes, it was good. First and ten from the 40-yard line. Deep forever. Incomplete. Shaw covering again. It will be second and ten for the Lions at the 40-yard line. What they did that time is when they threw that a little while ago, they threw it to the hook man over the middle, and Paul Bennett almost made the interception. He came charging up, and he went to the post. He had one-on-one -on -one with David Schaub, and he just threw it too far. Good coverage. He had a little room to throw it in there in the middle a little bit more to him that time with Paul out of there, too. Well, you know, when you take that man out of the hole, and that's that safety out of the middle, there's a lot of room to throw it. Second and 10 from the 40-yard line. Lions trailing 14-10. DeWolf, penalty try, Vernon Paul on Mark DeBray. Well, there's no doubt about this ball. Now, he had a hold on before the ball got there, and that constitutes a no-no. Watch it. catches that football, don't have a first down, but the interference gives him a first down. That's a good point right there, Ron, because I would have thought that he had the first down, but he's five yards short, maybe almost ten yards short of the first down. No, he was five yards short, I guess. 35, first and ten. The ball pass incomplete. You know, pattern Dave, similar to the one they ran earlier on this drive. Should have had, should have got that in there, Don. Uh, he's rolling out to his right, which is an easy throw for a quarterback. And all you got to do is just take your time and get the ball in there. But he hurried the throw, and he, he wasn't rushed either. And uh, I know he's going to be mad at himself because, as you say, that was the second time on this drive that he's missed pan pass on that thing. Pan pass. Walt has completed 13 of 29 attempts at 136 yards. Second and 10 for the Winnipeg 35. No. That appears to be a broken play. The wall is going to get about eight yards. He was looking for Ray Strong. <laughs> he almost got it the second time around. <laughs> he missed him the first time, almost gave it to him the second time. There's no more lonesome feeling than to turn around and see nobody there. And I tell you what, he panicked. <laughs> what? I watch oh, him go. Well, watch, watch this. Watch this. This, this is funny. Oh, wait a minute. Going up there. Now Strong comes back. And Strong says, you're going to give it to me. And he says, no, get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. He made a great gain out of it, though. <laughs> Got seven yards. 
That's what's called fake draw, fake draw, run in a circle, give it to him the second time around. Well, as you see, Luke Zaglia has not missed a field goal attempt against Winnipeg this season from the 35-yard line. He hooked that one. And it goes through the end zone for a single point. So it's now 14-11 with 12-04 remaining in the third quarter. Winnipeg in front. See, you bought a new Toro snow thrower. I sure did. But it ain't gonna snow much this year. Well, that's okay. With Toro's new snow risk program, if it snows less than 20% of average this season, I get all my money back. And I keep the Toro. All your money back? Mm hmm And you keep the Toro? Right. It's gonna snow more than 20%. Well, if it snows less than 50%, I get 50% of my money back. <laughs> you did good, son. <laughs> No matter how many of you come to Harvey's, no matter how often or when, your hamburger doesn't start charbroiling until you arrive. It's not preheated and waiting for you in a box. Only you can garnish it to your taste. The Harvey's Hamburger. It's made to order and costs very little. And that's got to be beautiful. Harvey's makes your hamburger a beautiful thing. Next week, it's Grey Cup weekend, and you will see it all on CBC as well as some great hockey. There's Philadelphia at Vancouver, Washington at Montreal, Minnesota at Toronto. Hockey night in Canada at 8 Eastern. Check local listings for the game in your area. The Blue Bombers for their first offensive series of the second half at John Huffnagel at quarterback. Here's where the psychological warfare comes in this crowd. They can't hear their plays, hardly. Complete to James Murphy. First down, Winnipeg at the 47-yard line. Well, James Murphy went down and like he was going to go deep, and then all of a sudden just turned around. Huffnagel put it high, but Murphy made the catch. Big play for Huffnagel to start the quarter. Hit that first pass. That's a big one. Well, Murphy and Boyd both they come down with that ball with a one for it. They get up there. First and ten. Up the wrong 47-yard line. A handoff to James Sykes, trying to get outside and then cutting back in for a pickup of about six yards. Brent Reset made the stop on James Sykes. The first time this afternoon, it looked like he should have been tackled behind the line of scrimmage, and he just turned himself sideways and slashed through and got a six-yard gain. Second and four. The ball is out of 53. because he only needs four yards. He was covered and he throws the hook right behind the Murphy. You know, we haven't talked too much about Huffnagel, but boy, he threaded the needle on that one right in there. And Murphy, you saw when those two defensive backs closed in on him, both hands on the football. Very important, especially when you get down there to the goal line. Winnipeg first and 10 at the BC 41. situation knowing John Hopnagel and you've seen him perform so many times coming on in relief this is the way he has worked so successfully in the past well that's John Hopnagel's strength he'll come off that bench because he studies so hard the week before the game he will be ready whether it's in starting or relief but he had better success coming in relief there's a play coming in from the sideline Hopnagel throwing game
set in from the sideline. 42-yard touchdown strike to Rick House. You see John go back here, looks to his right. House goes down the sidelines. There he goes. He lost it down there. Who's chasing him? No, it's Melvin Bird. Melvin Bird is chasing him. Right on the money. This has been something of a trying season for Rick House. That's the first touchdown he has scored this year. <laughs> he has been plagued with a series of nagging little injuries. The point after by Trevor Kenner. And we have 9.07 remaining in the third quarter. And we'll return to the stadium at BC Place with the Winnipeg kickoff after this. Available at regular beer prices. Canada, welcome to Miller Time. Welcome to Timex Quartz. Incredible technology. Our new Timex Elite is the thinnest quartz calendar watch in the world. Our new solid state watch has no moving parts. These are microchip projected hands. Now, bring the value of Timex Quartz into your world. Rick House, the Simon Fraser graduate, with the touchdown propelling Winnipeg into a 21-11 lead. You see Bell Belcher fending off Brent Reset to allow John Huffnagle time to throw that strike to Rick House. The kickoff to Crawford at the five-yard line. Excellent return all the way to the 49. Don, you could almost see that coming. They got those four big guys set up in front of Larry Crawford, and when there's that much room, a guy like Larry Crawford's going to gain yardage. Crawford told me before the game, he's, he sees me every week before he plays and says, say hello to my folks in Miami. So after that play, we got to say hello to his folks. And as Ron said, the avenue opened up there in the middle, and he almost broke it. A 43-yard kickoff return by Larry Crawford. He led the CFL in interceptions this season with 12. He makes a valuable contribution to the BC Lions on the special teams as well. DeWolf throwing deep for Mervyn Fernandez. Congratulate his wife because he's never home to do it. <laughs> well, I'd like to congratulate his wife. <laughs> 
<laughs> She's she, an angel. She deserves a lot of bouquets. Putting up with him for 18 years. The <laughs> lovely win. <laughs> Doug McIver, the injured ball player. Boy, the crowd is right back in this ball game. Well, we have a moment, Don. An injury to Jack Chatelaine of the BC Lions. In that first half, he has not returned to the Lions bench. They believe he has possibly some cracked ribs. So Chatelaine will likely not be back in the ball game. From the bomber side of the field, quarterback Tom Clements could well be back in this game. The injury is diagnosed as a bruised shoulder. So there's a possibility, according to trainer Pat Clayton, that he would play in the second half if needed. Pat Clayton attending to the injured knee of nose guard Doug McIver. Cal Murphy who brought his team to Vancouver on Thursday of this week wanting the opportunity to practice here in the Dome. Taking charge in your own way. You're taking charge 
with Chevrolet. Your best buy, period. Take charge, people. 84 Chevy Celebrity, front-wheel drive high-tech, family-sized room, family-sized fuel economy, gas or diesel, and a price that's down-to-earth Chevrolet. 84 Chevy Celebrity. Price the way you want to pay. Your take in charge with Chevrolet. Now there's a new dimension in color television, Electrohome Blue Optic. Four lens focusing captures all the detail for a bright, clear, crisp picture at a wide range of pure lifelike color. Less affected by harsh room light because the blue optic screen absorbs light. Electrohome Blue Optic Television. So real, it seems almost three-dimensional. On CBC Television, the North American television premiere of King Lear, William Shakespeare's greatest tragedy. At the age of 75, Sir Laurence Olivier gives the performance of his career. That's tonight on CBC. Well, for Winnipeg quarterback John Hoffnagel, when he calls his signals, he might think there are twice as many in attendance here at the stadium at BC Place. 59,409, the official paid attendance for this Western final. DeWolf caught away from Aaron Brown and then runs into Tony Norman after a pickup of about two. I'll tell you the thing I've been impressed with with Winnipeg this afternoon, on several occasions, one defender harnessed a running back in the open field, and that time they had two guys that closed in on him, but they're really going to the ball, both teams defensively, and that's what's making it such a hard-fought football game. Well, many people had predicted that it would be a very hard-fought close football game, and that's what we've witnessed so far. There have been very few Western finals that have to be hard. Intended for strong, incomplete. He continues on with the ball, but it's ruled an incomplete pass. Well, you know where that strong got his name. People just careen off of him. 5'988 pounds. You know, with 59,000 people in attendance here this afternoon, 54,000 at CNE Stadium in Toronto, not a bad day for the Canadian Football League at the box office. Great day. That's great to see. Well, I don't see how you can see two better football games. Winner of this one will, of course, face the Toronto Argonauts one week from today in Grey Cup 83. Third down kick by Pisaglia, fielded by Bennett at the 34. Bennett is taken out of bounds at the 43 by Nelson Martin. I mentioned earlier that Coach Cal Murphy brought his troops to Vancouver on Thursday to get them acclimatized to the stadium. Paul Bennett was telling me that there are some problems with the, the lights overhead coming right down into your eyes at times as you field the punch. You see Bennett raise that forearm under Martin's chin that time. If you get too close to that Bennett, you're going to get hit. Of course, in most parks, players are accustomed to having those lights shining from the side. Here, there are some lights overhead. James Sykes finds a good hole. Still on his feet, across midfield to the 54. Boy, he's hard to describe when he runs with the football. As you said before, it looks like he's not going anyplace. But he's got such great balance. And he just breaks tackles and gets himself into the open somehow, some way. The injured ball player is Brent Brissett. He ran into one of his own men, Rick Classen. And now, Leo, while we have a moment, you do your thing. Well, let me just say that this program is copyright and is strictly for the private use of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or exhibition in whole or in part without the express written consent of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation is strictly prohibited. You think Brent Brissett cares about that? All, all Brent Brissett cares about right now is getting back in that ball game. He'll be back, but for the moment, Ron Cherkis will be taking his spot. Must be kind of satisfying for Cal Murphy to have Clemens go down and have Huffnagel go in and throw that long strike for a touchdown. That takes a lot of pressure off the coach. Unfortunately for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, the Lions came right back with another one. James Sykes with that gallop to the 54. Has now carried the ball 10 times for 61 yards. Not a bad average. He'll get it again.
again. John Hotnagel came up to try and throw a block as Sykes spun away from Mac Moore and then was dropped by Kevin Konar. It will be second and ten. Actually, Sykes may have picked up about half a yard. At the Winnipeg bench, Coach Bob Spazliano explaining to Tyrone Jones some of the defensive maneuvers they want him to perform the next time that Winnipeg defensive unit is out there. Sykes to the sidelines for Rick House. He goes out of bounds. He'll be short of the first down, however. Stopped at the 49. 4.39 is the time left to play in this third quarter. 21-18, Winnipeg leads. Tom Clement started the ball game. He was injured late in the second quarter. John Huffnagel took over. He threw an early interception, but in the third quarter came back with a big touchdown strike to Rick House. Two fine punters, Bob Cameron. Pisaglia enjoying the benefits of kicking here under the dome. Crawford backs up to his goal line. And he is stopped at the six-yard line by John Bond. John, we're back to that field possession game again. Field position. You start from your six-yard line, you better move it out of there. You've got to get a couple first downs and then kick it. You don't want to give the Bombers too good a field position. It's tough to start when you're huddling in the end zone. Four turnovers in that first half really hurt the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Of course, the Lions have the top defensive club in the CFL. They led the league in interceptions. Establishing a record this year with 42, and JoJo Heath has picked off two in this game. The Wolves throwing deep for Mervyn Fernandez. He's got it. step and that defensive back's got to turn his back. Fernandez looks back to the ball right and goes and gets it. They had the ideal coverage. They were in a zone defense. Fernandez just out jumped him for the ball. That's great individual effort. Fernandez continuing to play the bombers as he did in two regular season games. Another mix up. A broken play of the ball from the Winnipeg got it. I believe that was John Pointer who came up with the ball. John Sturdivant was also there. Another broken play, and that's twice in this quarter. I think it's the that same the play. the Lions have been guilty of that miscue. I think it's the same play, the draw play. And he either turned the wrong way or Strong ran the wrong way. And there was nobody to hand the ball to. And he turned around in complete confusion, got the ball knocked out of his hands. And what a break that is for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. John Pointer would like to appear in his third straight ball game with his third different team. <laughs> Third straight breakup game, it could be, for John Pointer. He was with Edmonton. He was with Toronto. Sideline pattern, Hucklack out of bounds at the midfield stride. John Pointer. Edmonton, Toronto, and now Winnipeg. He wants to hit them all. That would be a rather unique accomplishment to play in three consecutive breakup games with three different teams. Of course, he hasn't been on winning teams on his two previous Grey Cup visits. Vanderbilt University, a very scholastic, scholastically inclined school, and John Pointer apparently was a pretty good student. On second down, John Hoffnagel still on his feet. He's going to try and run it. He's bounced out of bounds. Well short of a first down. He was looking downfield for James Murphy. But Murphy was well covered, and at that Winnipeg bench, Reuben Vaughn was exchanging words with several members of the Bombers. Now, watch this, as one of the players 
comes in and Dex is a member of the Winnipeg coaching staff. That was Ruben Vaughn. And it's rough play being charged against the BC Lions, Ruben Vaughn. You know, Ruben should have been satisfied to go in there and just knock down two coaches and about three players on the sidelines, but he got up and wanted to fight with everybody. That's a good way to get yourself in a lot of trouble. Major foul. Unnecessary roughness, BC 79, first down. Well, that could be a costly penalty for the Lions. Well, we're going to get a look at it, Leo. Watch this. Oh, boy. That's smart. Bob Vesveziani, the assistant coach, is the man who got decked at that Winnipeg bench. You probably feel it's all worth it, however, as Vaughn incurred a roughing penalty, taking a swipe at a Winnipeg player that collision. Hand off to James Sykes. Good hole. Sykes is having a great game. He's to the 30-yard line, and he will certainly merit some consideration for our Carling O'Keefe Offensive Game Star Award. That's a pickup of almost 11. I was just well, just start all that motion. Right? Go ahead. Finish what you got to say, Ron. You start all that motion, and those linebackers start looking around, and they can't step up in there quick enough, and the linemen are getting to them and opening those holes for Sykes. I just said, looking at Vespiani over there on the sidelines, after he got rolled, he, got, he, he thought of about four excuses to go all the way over to the bench and start coaching those players sitting on the bench until action got away from him. Willard Reeves was also on those sidelines, and of course he's their outstanding rookie, uh, Shenley nominee. Sideline for the final three games of the season because of a knee injury. But he is providing vocal support. 72 yards rushing for James Sykes now. Winnipeg first and 10 from the 31-yard line. Sykes gets it again. James Sykes with oh, another 10-yard run. He is a slasher. Lyle Bauer threw a key block to open a hole for James Sykes. He had 124 yards last Sunday against the Edmonton Eskimos. He's now got 82 yards this afternoon. Well, if you can get a guy to come through, watch Morris come out on the outside. I don't know if you see his block, but he got a key block right there. But well, watch him turn sideways now, and then go back against the grain, against the pursuit. Well, you get a guy that can have that instinct to run against the pursuit, he'll make a lot of yardage. George Dixon was a great running back over in Montreal, a Shenley Award winner, and he can do that about as well as anybody. Hoffnagel again coming over to the bench to confer with Coach Cal Murphy. One of the things that Winnipeg general manager Paul Robson has done this year is add people to the roster when the Bombers have had starters go down as a result of injury. And the addition of James Sykes may prove to be one of the most valuable he has made all season. I think that Paul Robson has done an outstanding job in his first year as a general manager. I think that entire Winnipeg organization has a lot to be proud of. They've had a lot of adversity, and I tell you what, they've done a heck of a job. You know what makes them so good? It's because nobody wants to run the whole show. They all want to do their own jobs, cooperate in their own areas, and they're all very good friends. They respect that, each other. Isn't that called teamwork? That sure is, right at the top. And boy, it shows that the team and the players, everybody else concerned. Well, Sykes got a nine-yard gain on that. The measurement revealed that he was just a little short. Crawford, the injured ball player, and on second and short, John Huffnagel kept it, and dove to the 20-yard line. But, Ron, as you have pointed out in previous telecasts, I think every time John Huffnagel carries that ball in the sneak, Cal Murphy cringes just a little. Well, I know John's not the greatest <laughs> sneaker in the world, but Cal Murphy got a lot of confidence. John will get the job done. That's all we know. He comes off that bench and plays well, and I know nobody's more happy to be in this game than he is. He just doesn't get down <laughs> low enough when he's on that He's all legs. <laughs> he's all legs. Tommy Clements get along very well. There was some watching Thorpe the other day. We stopped in on him. From the 20, first and 10, Winnipeg. Hoffnagel having difficulty finding a receiver. Hit the key line. Melvin Bird intercepts at the 14-yard line. Hoffnagel should never have thrown that one. And who forced that play? Number 37, Mr. Jackson, went in there and made the big play, caused the ball to be thrown forward just stood there and saluted the entire audience because he's so glad to be in that football game. Watch him here, number 37. Been a great one. He stopped that arm from coming forward. You see the result. That ball went end over end. He shouldn't have thrown that football, but that's 
Glenn Jackson getting into this game, that's what he means to the BC Lions. He's made two real big plays today. That's the fifth turnover that the Lions have forced in this ball game. Winnipeg leading 21-18. That's a big one right there because Winnipeg had a chance really to take over the game to some extent on that drive. Aaron Brown almost picked off the pass intended for John Pankratz with just seven seconds remaining in the third quarter. You know, you talk about our Carling O'Keefe Game Star Awards. Aaron Brown is a candidate for that defensive honor. Sure is. So is JoJo Heath of the BC Lions. Boy, look at Aaron Brown. He picks that off. He walks into the end zone. It will be no contest. Aaron Brown earlier had an interception that set up a Winnipeg touchdown. That was in the first quarter. It's second and ten. This should be the final play of the third quarter. Draw play with Strong trying to get outside. And he's to the 22. Well, at least they made the handoff this time. And that is the end of the third quarter. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers lead 21-18, and we'll be back right after this. Hey, Canada! Welcome to Miller Time. Now through here, it's yours and mine. Come on and bring your thirsty self right here. You've got the time, we've got the beer. For what you have in mind. Available at regular beer prices. Canada, welcome to Miller Time. The move is on. All across Canada, over 50,000 people a month are opening daily interest savings accounts at Bank of Montreal. I switched to earn daily interest the day I make a deposit. Interest paid monthly. That's 12 times a year. My old bank's regular savings account only paid up twice a year. That's why over 50,000 a month are opening daily interest savings accounts. Enter the super saving sweepstakes at the Bank of Montreal today. Fifteen minutes away from declaring a Western champion and opponent for the Toronto Argonauts next Sunday in Grey Cup 83, produced by CBC Television. And, of course, you'll see all the other excitement of Grey Cup week. The Shenley Awards on Thursday, the Grey Cup Parade, and our pregame show, The Thrill of It All. Somewhat ironic that they've talked so much about this game being played under ideal weather conditions. It's a beautiful day outside today in Vancouver. The sun was shining brightly. It was about 10 degrees when we came into the stadium. But it's awful, awful wet outside, I'll tell you. They've had a lot of rain. Kick by Pisaglia. Bennett retreats to his own 30-yard line. Penalty flag on the play as Bennett goes down at the 42. Stopped by Gerald Roper. Today we're going to get Scott Flagle on a, an illegal block. That is the call as illustrated by referee Bud Ulrich. A 59-yard kick by Lou Pisaglia. He and his counterpart with the Blue Bombers, Bob Cameron, are certainly putting on a display here in the Dome. I think it'd be a fair assumption to say that anyone that we go. wins this ball game will Number probably 14. be limping off the field because First it's down. really getting tough. And nothing's going to be easy in this fourth quarter. You can see right there, number 31, Kevin Pomar was hit in the back by Scott Flagle. That was the call. First and ten, they're at their own 27-yard line. Neither side has been able to take control of this ball game. James Sykes, what a job he is doing running for Winnipeg. I'll tell you one thing, he's trying to take personal control. Well, I'll tell you what, when you get into big football games, you've got to have the veterans. The veterans win for you, and Sykes has been through all this before. 5'11", 185-pound James Sykes out of Rice via Washington and the Calgary Stampeders recruited by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers for their final regular season game against the Toronto Argonauts. You may recall seeing that game on CBC television 
during the course of that game, Sykes was a little tentative, but he certainly has not been in the playoffs. Well, you, you can't sit out. Football's a contact game. You've got to play week in, week out in order to keep your timing and being uh, ready to be hit. And the running back's no different than anybody else. He's got to get hit to feel good. And I'll tell you one thing, he got used to it in a hurry because the last few weeks he's been something. Sykes now has 91 yards, just shy of a first down on that last carry at second and inches. Hopnagel keeps it again, and he has the first down. He's going to like that for a long. He's going to enjoy doing that. Well, in you know, case you joined us late, Tom Clement started the ball game for Winnipeg. He suffered a bruised shoulder late in the second quarter. He has not played since then. You know, just sitting here thinking, Huffnagel's doing a good job. There's no question about that. But he doesn't have that dimension that Clements has to run with the football. And when you get the outside receivers they have and the inside receivers, and that's Sykes in the backfield, that's a pretty potent offense. Sykes again, penalty flag on the play. But I think it will be called back. Illegal procedure. They had no end, I don't believe, uh, that everybody in motion and nobody ever got up on the line of scrimmage over here. Good call, Ron. is upset. Well, we talked about that before. All of the motion that's happening with a lot of Canadian Football League teams right now, the guy that comes up in the slot more than often is not the, is making the play illegal by not you know, showing somebody who the outside man is on the line of scrimmage. Procedure. Winnipeg. No end. First down repeated. Neither one were up there. Well, the end of the spot. You're right, Ron. They didn't get up there on the outside that time. I was watching them come over, and they were really trying to hustle to get there. But with this crowd, you don't hear the, the cadence real well, so you've got to really hustle. That wiped out. A 25-yard gallop by James Sykes. 13-14, the time left in the ball game. First and 15, Winnipeg. Sideline pattern for Hucklack. He's unable to hang on. It will be second and 15 from the 33. You know, Leo, you were talking about Huffnagel not being able to run. Huffnagel can run with the football, but he can't scramble around and buy time like Clemens does. Huffnagel tried to take that one low, but the wall, wall went between his legs. Almost caught it with his heels. Second and 15. Mac Moore tried to get through. Hoffnagel throwing it intended for Boyd. Knocked away by Jojo Heath. Almost intercepted. Excellent defense by Jojo Heath. He read that quarterback and he went after the ball. Watch him come. Number 26. He's had an awfully good day playing football back there on that corner. Winnipeg Blue Bombers require a big one out of their kicking specialist, Bob Cameron, with 12.40 remaining in the ball game. Winnipeg clinging to a 21-18 lead. Jojo Heath is stopped at the 45. Scott Flagel was downfield to make the tackle. The Lions will be scrimmaging first and 10 from their 45 when we return. More Montreal, more Winnipeg, more Calgary, more Edmonton, more Toronto. For the business traveler, Air Canada has more flights more often with more non-stops to more major Canadian cities than any other airline. And moreover, their superb connoisseur service. More Halifax, more Fly Air Canada and get more. More Vancouver, more The new Filler Shave has made this man a Filler Shave man. It's because the Filler Shave's improved lift and cut system now shaves more than twice as close as before. And fingertip controls make every close shave comfortable and precise. The new Filler Shave from Philips for the Filler Shave man. One close shave after another. 
Tip 83 on CBC Television has it all. We begin with the first time coast-to-coast -coast coverage of the Shenley Awards on Thursday. Then Saturday, the color and the excitement on Sports Weekend of the Great Cup Parade. Sunday at 4 Eastern, we begin five hours of game day coverage. The thrill of it all, a Great Cup preview show, and then the game itself. Be with us on CBC Television. completely outside. He outflanked him. Look at the block. He's outside. He's in a position to lead him right down the field. Excellent call. Excellent execution. Strong looks like he said, give me that ball. I don't want that Sykes to look any better than me today. A 20-yard run for Ray Strong. First and 10. The Lions at the Winnipeg 45. They trail by three. Quickly in for John Henry White. Tackled by Vernon Paul at the 26. Don, he came in motion. The last time they ran the football, there's a big hole in there. This time, Huffman will just raise up and dump it to him. 18 yards the game for John Henry White. Watch the wall. Watch it. Look at the hole. Just raised up and dumped the ball to John Henry and let him run. Well, that linebacker can't be right. He's up there trying to force on the run and then get back there on the pass. And that time, he just stood up on the line of scrimmage. They hit him right down the seam. First and 10 from the 27-yard line. Sierra, gas or diesel, nothing else leaves you feeling quite the same. After all, it's an Oldsmobile. How was your day, dear? You'll see Fernandez now. It's supposed to be a little bit of a play action. He comes across the middle, catches the ball, and Paul Bennett has overcommitted to the inside, trying to make the play, and he just stepped inside of Paul, found the opening, and took it right all the way in for the score. Just a great execution, Ron. So the Lions now lead by four as the Sackler kicks off to Kirby Wilson. He's brought down at the 27-yard line. Mervyn Fernandez with two big touchdowns. We recall a game earlier in the year against the Montreal Concord where he scored three touchdowns without ever being touched on neither of his two touchdowns this afternoon did the Winnipeg defender play a hand on him. Well, what happens here? He runs a curl pattern, and he's smart enough to stay away from the safety, and Paul Bennett comes to make the play, and he catches it and ducks inside of him. That's a great effort by Fernandez. He's just got that great move, and when Paul was coming across, Helder Skelder to try to get into the play. He just ducked right inside of him. Nobody's going to catch him when he does that. 
And he's a definite candidate for our Carling O'Keefe Offensive Game Star Award. That's the injured Vernon Paul. As Crazy George has the fans at the stadium at BC Place standing up in sections of domino effect. This is fun, isn't it? It is fun, and it will be fun one week from today as well. And if you're coming to the Grey Cup Celebration 83, you'll be treated to a tremendous week. If you can't make it, you'll see all the excitement, of course, on CBC television. Canada's own energy. It's the sign of exploration for oil and gas along the ocean shelf. It's the sign of oil sands development. The sign of conventional oil production. It's the sign of Canada's own oil company. Petro Canada. It's your oil company? Why not make it your service station too? built-in flash is just about the easiest camera in the world to use. No matter who you want to hound, smile. You can oink, you can move, you can cock a doodle doodle. I'm going to get you with the Kodak disc. Well, right now, it's 
up to the Blue Bomber defense to get the ball back for that man, Tom Clements, who is warming up at the Winnipeg bench. Almost certainly he will be going in to direct their offense the next time the Blue Bombers get the ball. But at the moment, the Lions have possession. They lead by four. pickup of about three, maybe four yards. John Sturdivant came in to pull the feet out from under him. I don't think, except on perhaps one occasion, anybody but Ray Strong has carried the ball in a running play for the BC Lions. I think John Henry White has only carried it once. Look, I think you're right. He's caught the pass, but he hasn't carried the football. Well, they rule that Strong got up to the 34-yard line, so it would be second and five. The ball flipping it out to John Henry White. He is going to be very close to the first down. Stopped there by Kirby Wilson. 7.31, the time remaining here at the stadium at BC Place. This Western Championship game. The winner facing the Toronto Argonauts in Grey Cup 83, one week from today. This is going to be very, very close. He's across the 
30 to the 31. Hernandez on the receiving end of seven throws this afternoon, 260 yards and three touchdowns. Ooh. for most yards in a playoff game, 270 by Roland Fraser in the uniform of the Edmonton Eskimos against Calgary in 1952. Boy, this is going to be another real close. They're short. Could be a couple inches short. Don't think there's much doubt, though, that they will go for this one. You've got to go get it now, and it's the whole season right. 558 is the time remaining. Keeps for the first down to the 35. 5.45 is the time remaining. You know, Don, we've said all year the BC Lions have a big play offense, and that's what they've done today again. Well, their big play offense primarily has revolved around <laughs> one man. <laughs> well, they wouldn't have won that Montreal game half as easily if they hadn't done the same thing. Three touchdown passes on long strikes. And that Montreal game looked as though he was playing touch football. Doesn't look much different this afternoon. Hot <laughs> angle to James Sykes. He's tracked down by Kevin Kuna. And Ray Jones also came over to half. The BC Lions are doing a good job of mixing up their defenses. They've had six and sometimes seven defensive backs in there. Well, there's nothing can ignite a football team like a long strike for a touchdown. They've had three of them. Well, they gain absolutely nothing here. They all watch it. Look at them flying their bodies around there, boy. They're just... They've got the edge right now, and it's going to be tough to take it away from them. Sykes is 
going to get it. He didn't make it. Dave McNeil, the middle linebacker, comes up with the football. They're ruling that the play had been whistled dead, but James Sykes did not make it anyway. Sport Coupe, high-tech Berlinetta, high-performance Set 28, and a price that's down-to-earth Chevrolet, 84 Chevy Camaro. Price the way you want to pay, you're taking charge with Chevrolet. Brings his team up over the ball, second and one. 32-21, the Lions in front of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. First down and more. He gets to the 17-yard line. Well, this crowd early in the ball game was certainly quiet after the Winnipeg Blue Bombers scored two quick touchdowns to take the lead 14 to 3. But they have been noisy, raucous here in the second half. Well, I think we can see now why they were putting the Vaseline on the goalposts before the game to try to discourage people from going out there and hanging on the goalposts and pulling the goalposts down there, putting Vaseline on it. And watch these people come out of the stands when they win this football game. First down from the 17-yard line. John Henry White, a big burst up the middle, another first down. Boy, they're savoring it right now. 2.09, the time remaining. You saw Coach Don Matthews on the sidelines. He has had the ability to merge ability and emotion with this British Columbia football team in this 1983 season. He has reason to smile as a dejected Tom Clements and the rest of that Winnipeg Blue Bomber organization look on. Second and less than a yard, John Henry White will score!
the game, it would be a party. Well, the party is over. And now the BC Lions can begin celebrating as they are Grey Cup bound one week from today. The point after by Lou Pasaglia. And it's now 39-21 as John Henry White, who has seen only limited work as a pass receiver. Primarily as a pass receiver, limited work as a runner, puts it in the end zone. I'll tell you one thing, that Strong knows what to do as a blocker, too, Don. He went through there in a personal interfere up in front, made a key block, and White then took it right in the end zone. And when he went in the end zone, Bobo Vilovich turned to his staff and said, get out the BC film. I'll tell you what, I said all along that home field advantage in the finals is a must. Too many times over the years, the team that has that home field wins it. And boy, I'll tell you, it's been a, this crowd today has been super for the BC Lions. Well, I think we have, before we give the BC Lions their just dues, and we certainly will, we've got to give Cal Murphy and those Winnipeg Blue Bombers a lot of credit for the wonderful season they've had under the most adverse conditions. The kickoff is taken by Sean Kehoe. Still on his feet. And Keogh gets all the way to the 50-yard line before he's thrown out of bounds by Mal Bird. And as I said earlier, and I'm sure this Winnipeg team will reflect back on the squandered scoring opportunities in the first half. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. When you get into big games, you've got to put the ball in the end zone when you have the opportunity. You don't get that many chances. And when you're on the road especially, you've got to get them down at home. They just didn't have it today. The BC Lions have come back strong. Well, in spite of the deepness of the Winnipeg secondary on defense, you got to throw that ball deep on the side that Fernandez is going. That's been proven. John Hoffnagel completes the pass and it has a pick off. conjecture all winter long on the part of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, particularly that man, Cal Murphy, as to what might have been had Tom Clements not been injured. That's not to take anything away from John Huffnagel, but for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers during the course of this season, it was the quarterback du jour. Who would it be from day to day? Well, when they finally got Tom Clements, they thought they had their man. Then the collarbone injury that sidelined him for five weeks, and the injury today that kept him out of the second half. Don Taylor in there at a running back position. He is out to the line of scrimmage, and no further stop there by Donovan Rose with a minute and 30 remaining. Well, Don, is this a case in all of football or any kind of sporting event? Two equal teams, and I really believe they're both equal. But in, in a big game, an equal team, the team that makes the fewest mistakes will win. Six turnovers, not going to get it done. And one more thing that you mentioned before, Ron, this hometown crowd has met at least seven points. Just super. It's a great place to play football. Well, there are many people responsible for bringing you coverage of CFL football on CBC television. And some of the same people who worked with us this afternoon and on CBC telecast throughout the entire season. We'll be busy all next week installing equipment and looking after the technical facilities as CBC Television produces and brings you Grey Cup 83. Boy, I hope everybody in Toronto is looking at this stands and looking at this reaction here. And I hope this will give them the boost to go out after that dome stadium that everybody's been talking about back in Toronto. That political message from Leo Kagan. <laughs> Well, it is a party right here now. It is a party. Great. Aaron Brown is the injured Winnipeg player. It's been a rough year for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, but they can head home with their heads held high because under tremendous adversity, they came so very close to perhaps going all the way. You know, the funny thing is, Tom Clements is not the kind of a guy that gets hurt real easily, but he's taken a couple unorthodox hits on two different occasions that's just rendered him useless as far as playing. And it's just unfortunate for this Winnipeg team. That man right there has had an outstanding day today, Aaron Brown. I've been 
on both sides of the field in these things. It's more fun on the other side. Yes, it's tough with 59 seconds remaining in the ball game and the outcome all over to take those blows out there. You just want to get into the dressing room and head for home. I've been on both sides too, Rod, but I was on one side yelling at referee. <laughs> Paul Bennett takes it out of bounds at the eight-yard line with 43 seconds left in the game. There's our Carling O'Keefe offensive game star. Three touchdowns, seven receptions, 260 yards. Mervyn Fernandez, JoJo Heath, two interceptions. Our Carling O'Keefe defensive game star. His thefts so are first to Tom Clements pass, and then one by John Huffnagel in that first half. Perhaps turn things around for the D.C. Lions. Well, there are a lot of guys that could have won that start today, but I'm always a believer you got to make the plays when they count. And JoJo Heath made them early in a football game. So it will be Toronto and British Columbia in Grey Cup 83 one week from today, the first time those two teams have ever met in a Grey Cup Classic. And boy, you really got to be happy for the coaching staff, the players, especially the fans, and for a little guy that's been with this football team 31 years, Bobby Ackles. Bobby Ackles, who skipped school, who... Be a ball boy with the BC Lions 31 years ago. And his career has progressed through the ranks to the position of general manager. And today, he is witnessing his British Columbia Lions in this magnificent facility win the Western title and go on to the Grey Cup game. Look at crazy How about Al Wilson? How about Al Wilson there? moment I don't think he's any more excited than Crazy George. <laughs> That's a dream come true for Al boy at the twilight of his well, career is. get that great cup. This guy never quit all afternoon. James Sykes gave it his best shot all afternoon. He has a Winnipeg first down just across the 30 yard line with 19 seconds remaining. Yes next week sorts of activity taking place here in Vancouver, and you'll see the Shenley Awards, you'll see the Great Cup Parade, our pregame service, and the game itself on CBC Television. Twelve seconds the time remaining as Ruben Bond drops quarterback John Huffnagel for a loss. Should be the final play of the ball game. And you'll see fans coming onto the field. You'll hear a tremendous roar when this one ends. <laughs> Hot angle trying to get that pass away. The ball is fumbled. It's picked up by Glenn Jackson. That's the ball game. The DC Lions are the 1983 Western Conference champions they defeat the Winnipeg Blue Bombers 39-21 and it's a mob scene here on the artificial turf stadium at BC Place the fans are pouring out onto the field the Lions are the Western Champions Carlsberg Light all right people here say it's one good beer Carlsberg Light all right cold as ice it's one real good beer crack a cold one now and see why it's that light refreshing taste for me cause bird light all right raise a cheer for good beer the rookie head coach of the British Columbia Lions. He has five consecutive Grey Cup wins as an assistant coach with the Edmonton Eskimos, and he now has the opportunity to make it six in a row as the head man of the British Columbia Lions. Fitting, I suppose, gentlemen, in that the top two teams, East and West, are playing for the Grey Cup. It sure is. And early in the ball game, when Winnipeg was ahead, we said that the BC Lions had been too good all year to be out of it, and they certainly displayed that they're a football team. They came back and won it big. There's one more left, and it's a big one, Don. Well, the party may be over here at the stadium at BC Place. Many of the fans don't want to leave. Many of them will be back one week from today for Grey Cup 83. We hope you will be, too. Right now, let's go down to John Well. 
Don, we remind everyone of our CBC television coverage of Grey Cup 83. We begin with the Shenley Awards on Thursday. The Grey Cup Parade on Sports Weekend Saturday. The thrill of it all kicks it off Sunday afternoon. Grey Cup 83 from BC Place. Once again, the final score, the BC Lions over the Blue Bombers, 39 to 21. So it will be the Lions and the Argos in the Grey Cup next Sunday. CFL 83 has been brought to you by Curling O'Keefe, Brewers of OB, the Carlsberg Beers, and Miller Highlight. And we thank you for watching. CFL 83 has been a CBC Sports presentation. This is CBC.